border. And um, let me uh, acknowledge uh, our distinguished uh, members of the Senate. Uh, let me acknowledge Senate President Tito Soto, Sen um, Senator Ping Lacson, and Senator Francis Tolentino. Uh, with that, uh, let me direct the committee secretary to acknowledge the resource persons for this morning. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Senator Gillian, it's recognized. Yes, Mr. can Chairman, I also? also present. Mr. Chair, yes. I'm also present. We are present, Mr. Chairman. Can you also be yes. present for the record? Yes. Not only those in the session hall. The committee secretary will acknowledge the uh, senators first and then acknowledge yes. the uh, resource person. I uh, oh. beg your indulgence. Morning. Uh, we would like to acknowledge the presence of our senators who are uh, present via video conference. Senator Manuel Lapi, Senator Risa Monteveros, Senator Miguel Subiri, Senator Franklin M. Durlon, Senator Juan, Juan Edgardo Angara. <laughs> We also would like to acknowledge Senator Pia Cayetano. We also would like to acknowledge the presence of our resource persons. They will also participate via video conference. They are from the OJ, ASEC Felix Nicolas D. Attorney Charles Romulus Cambaliza. And from ABS-CBN, Mr. Martin L. Lopez. Mr. Carlo Katigba. Ms. Socorro Vidanes, Attorney Mario Bautista, Mr. Mark Nepomoceno, Attorney Maxim Uy, Attorney Enrique Yazon, Mr. Ricardo Tan, uh, Honorable Juan Ponce Enrile, former Senate President, Honorable Renato Puno, former Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, and Father Rancillo Aquino, Dean of San Beda University, Graduate School of Law. We also would like to acknowledge the presence of our senators, Senator uh, De La Rosa and Senator Nancy Binay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Committee Secretary. Um, as the Vice Chairman of the Committee of Public Services, I was tasked to uh, hear uh, several bills pertaining to the franchise of ABS-CBN. Uh, I was tasked no less than by the chairman who inhibited him herself in the proceeding. Uh, today we'll be tackling uh, four bills that were referred to the Public Services Committee. Uh, Senate Bill Number 1521, or an act granting the ABS-CBN Broadcasting Corporation provisional franchise to construct, install, operate, and maintain television and radio broadcasting stations in the Philippines, authored by 13 senators, Senator Lapid, Senator Dillon, Senator Recto, Senator Gordon, Senator Villanueva, Senator Zubiri, Senator Angara, Senator Pinay, Senator Rivilla, Senator Antiveros, Senator Pangilinan, Senator Pang <coughs> And uh, another bill, Senate number 981, and this is to renew the ABS-CBN franchise for 25 years, authored by Senator Recto, Senator Dilima, and Senator Pacquiao. Another bill is Senate number 1403 to renew ABS-CBN franchise for 25 years, authored by Senator Rivilla. And the last is Senate, uh, number, Senate bill number 1374, seeking to extend the term of ABS franchise, ABS-CBN franchise until December 31, 2020, authored by Senator Rivilla. I'd like to uh, um, indulge the... Um, Number, uh, which is uh, which aims to grant the ABS-CBN a provisional franchise, and also to Senate Bill Number One Three Seven Four. This is to extend its term. Uh, 
I would like to uh, just insert this into the record as part of my opening remarks. But instead, with kind indulgence of uh, opening based on my experience uh, with what is happening here in our country. Uh, sa huling dalawang uh, ng uh, taon na ito, ay um, uh, ako po ay uh, inubos ko po ang oras ko sa pagtulong po sa ating mga kababayan sa paglaban po dito sa COVID at pinag-aralan po rin natin ng mabuti itong nangyayari po sa ating bansa, lalo na dito so dito, dito ho sa pandemyang ito. At uh, sa akin pag-aaral po, maraming uh, mga strategiya ang ginagawa po ng ating pamalaan. Nandito na ho yung pagtaas at uh, paglunsad po ng mga testing laboratories. Dito po paglunsad po ng mga isolation centers sa iba't ibang lugar po ng ating bansa. Nandito na rin po yung pagbubukas po ng ekonomiya natin daan-daan. Uh, itong virus na ito ho ay kakaiba no? dahil uh, patuloy na pinag-aaralan po ng maraming siyentista at dalubhasa. Pero sa ngayon, masasabi ko ito siguro ang pinaka malalang krisis na hinaharap po ng ating bansa. Sa ngayon, ang tala po ay meron po, po tayong 12,000 cases ng COVID sa ating bansa at 831 na po ang namamatay po dito sa virus na ito. Sa buong mundo, uh, meron po hong 4.7 million cases na naitala at 318 deaths o namatay ho dito sa virus na ito sa buong mundo. Pero hindi lang po ito problema sa kalusugan. Ito rin po ay problema sa pang-ekonomi natin. At sa mga briefing na nakita ko, ho, uh, ang ating ekonomiya ay nalugi o yung losses na tinatawag natin ay pumapalo ho ng 1.1 trillion pesos according to NEDA. At uh, dahil patuloy pa po itong pandemya na uh, nangyayari po sa ating bansa, ang estimate po ng ADB sa loob po ng 6 na buwan, pwede pa rin po tayo malugi ng 1.2 trillion pesos. Pero ang pinakamasakit po sa nangyayari po sa atin ngayon, halos uh, sa mga pag-aaral po ng uh, NEDA, at iba pang mga ekonomista, 2.5 million na trabaho po ang potential na mawawala po sa ating bansa dahil po dito sa pandemya ito. Kaya mga kasama itong hinarap po natin ay napakabigat. Pero sa dami pong solusyon na ginagawa po ng ating uh, pamalaan, nakita ko ang pinaka-efektibong solusyon ho ay yung pakikisama at pakikisa po ng ating mga kababayan. Uh, nakita ho namin sa aming lungsod sa Valenzuela at ito pinag-aralan din ho ng aming mga doktor na kung ang isang tao ay ma-infect, sigurado ho yan, anim na tao ho ang ma-infect niya muli. At yung anim na tao ma-infect na ho yun, anim ho ulit ang ma-infect niya. Kaya ang pinakamagandang strategiya ho dito ay turuan ho natin ang ating mga kababayang hindi ma-infect. Turuan ho natin ang ating mga kababayang na umiwas sa mga delikadong lugar at uh, gawin po yung mga tinatawag natin new normal. Magsuot ng mask, maghugas ng kamay, at huwag kong pumunta sa mata ang lugar. Itong mga ganitong bagay, yung pakikisa ng publiko, kailangan po ng impormasyon. Kailangan po, uh, tuloy-tuloy po ang pagtuturo po natin sa ating mga kababayan. Tuloy-tuloy po ang pagbibigay po natin ng impormasyon dahil sila mismo ang pinakasolusyon kung paano po natin mahinto itong virus at pagkalat ng virus sa ating bansa. Aminin na po natin, napakahirap po magtayo ng testing laboratory. Nag-uusap po kami ni Senping ito, halos araw-araw po kami nag-uusap. Talagang komplikado po ang pagtatayo ng testing laboratory. Pero kung matuturuan po natin ang ating kapabayan na umiwas, magkasakit, matuto gawin yung mga bagong normal or new normal na sinasabi po natin, at uh, wag po sila ma-infect ng virus, Ito ay mahinto ho natin at uh, sigurado po eh, magiging matagumpay ho tayo sa paglaban ho ng COVID. Sa ganun punto ho, uh, minarapat ho ng Senado na magkaroon ho ng preliminary hearing dahil sa tingin ko ho, personal na, na, sa aking palagay at sa tingin ko ho, na importante na lahat ng istasyon, ABS man, GMA, TV5, PT4, IBC13, lahat ho itong istasyon na ito ay nagbibigay po ng impormasyon 
at tinuturuan po ang ating mga kababayan na umiwas sa mga delikadong uh, lugar at uh, mag-practice po ng tinatawag natin new normal. Kaya ho, minarapat po namin na magkaroon ho ng preliminary hearing para po pag-usapan na yung uh, tinatawag nating professional franchise na pinapag-usapan po rin sa Kongreso. At uh, itong provisional franchise sa aking pagkaalam ay, ay uh, pinakikinggan at uh, dinindinig sa mababang kapulungan pero hindi rin po nila inalis yung pagdininig po ng mas mahabang franchise. Ito po yung 25-year franchise. Kaya po, para po madali ang mabigyan po ng pagkakataon na mag-operate kaagad ang ABS-CBN sa loob po nitong pandemya na ito, uh, minarapat po namin umpisa na yung pagdinig nitong provisional franchise, ito po yung mas maiksing franchise, para po uh, mako-operate na sila at uh, makatulong po sa paglaban ng pandemya. Uh, sa mga kasama ko, 8 session days na lang tayo, starting today. Talaga pong kulang, uh, hindi naman kulang, pat talagang siksik sa oras po uh, itong ginagawa po natin sa pagtatalakay uh, uh, nitong uh, provisional franchise. Uh, pero ngayon gusto ko natin pakinggan sa ating mga dalubhasa kung ano po yung mga isyong pumapalipot po dito sa pinag-uusapan nating franchise. At of course, uh, pinakamahalaga po ang opinion at uh, sa loobin po ng ating mga uh, membro ng Senado. Um, with that, I uh, would like to open the floor already to the discussion of the uh, four bills, particularly two pertaining to a provisional franchise. Of the ABS-CBN. Mr. Chairman, may I be allowed to uh, make a manifestation uh, as we start? Yes, yes, Mr. President. Uh, first of all, I uh, would like to greet everyone. Uh, very good morning to all our resource persons, particularly my uh, dear friend. Temporary in the 10th Congress, Senator uh, or Senate President Juan Ponce Enrile, and all the other guests uh, invited and resource persons. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Um, Mr. Chairman, I was uh, ready to tackle the uh, prevailing issues uh, regarding the ABS CBN uh, Corporation or uh, franchise. Uh, which has been going on for quite a while now. Um, and contrary to what has been known to many, it was uh, as early as 2014, or even in Congress, there were questions uh, already that arose in the, on the franchise. However, these issues were not highlighted. It was only recently that um, the debates granting the franchise to abs has has uh, circulated <coughs> all over social media, print, uh, broadcast, even on other networks now. Uh, um, but uh, I was um, surprised because um, there was a development in the House of Representatives last night. Instead of uh, approving the provisional franchise that they, um, they passed the other week, on third reading, uh, uh, hopefully yesterday, they uh, opted to reconsider it for second reading. Now, this caught me off my plan and prepared questions and issues because uh, right now we will be tackling Senate bills and a Senate resolution that is before the committee. But uh, we, know the, we note the fact that what your committee will be reporting out is the House bill. You will not be reporting out any of the Senate bills that you'll be hearing now. So we don't really know what shape, color, or size the bill that eliminate from the House would look like. Now, there are different proposals, as I was uh, monitor uh, monitoring them last night. Uh, there was a 25-year proposal, two-year proposal. So I... Um, I will opt to raise my uh, questions, particularly on the House bill. Uh, and um, I will do that uh, uh, in the hearing when 
once we receive the house bill, it is transmitted to us after they pass it on Thursday. I will opt to do that. Uh, we will just uh, listen to uh, the resource persons now and perhaps one or two questions later on just to uh, uh, make sure that uh, everything is clear. Uh, that's, uh, that's all, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Senator President. Senator Luxon is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is an addendum to uh, the remarks uh, made by the Senate President. You know, anyway, I look at the situation in relation to the ABS-CBN franchise bills now pending in both houses of Congress. It has become confusing to say the least, Mr. President or uh, Mr. Chairman. There are 12 pending bills, I understand, in the Committee on Legislative Franchises in the House. Now comes House Bill 6732 being sponsored on the House floor that seeks to grant ABS-CBN a provisional franchise to expire on October 31, 2020. Now, assuming for the sake of discussion, Mr. Chairman, that they transmit House Bill 6732 to the Senate after uh, approval on third and final reading, probably next week. And while the 12 pending bills have yet to be reported out by their committee, on legislative franchises on the House floor, how will the Senate treat uh, those measures? Uh, it is my understanding that we cannot uh, take plenary action unless the House transmits to us the House version. Now, since the 12 pending bills uh, to grant uh, ABCBN the 25-year legislative franchise, uh, have yet to come out of the uh, committee. In fact, they have not uh, initiated or even held a single committee hearing uh, in that regard. So that is the question that I will ask the resource persons uh, later, Mr. President, Mr. Chairman. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, uh, Senator Lapso. Senator Tolentino is recognized. Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, my, my esteemed colleagues, resource persons, I support the earlier statements made by the Honorable Senate President, as well as my colleague from Cavite, Senator Luxon. The issue here, Mr. President, as what the, Mr. Chairman, the issue, as what the good chairman mentioned a while ago, the bills See, before this committee are four Senate bills. It is very clear in Section 24, Article 6 of the Constitution, that all appropriation, and I quote, revenue or tariff bills, bills authorizing increase of public debt, bills of local application, and private bills shall originate exclusively in the House of Representatives, but the Senate may propose or concur with amendments, unquote, Mr. President. So it goes to show, Mr. President, that what the Senate is mandated to do is to propose amendments or concur with amendments of a bill coming from the House. And we have that in, in House Bill 6732. Our dilemma, Mr. President, is that, as what my esteemed colleague from Cavite mentioned a while ago, is that House Bill 6732 has yet to be transmitted to this chamber, Mr. President, Mr. Chairman. So my, my question is this. Probably it will be raised later by some of our colleagues that we have the Tolentino versus Secretary of Finance case, 19, circa 1995, wherein one of the justices mentioned in an obiter dictum that there is such a thing as anticipatory substitute bill. But Mr. Chairman, the case of uh, Tolentino versus Secretary of Finance, which also involves one, one of our departed colleagues, a good friend, Senator Raul Rojo, involves a the VAT law which was transmitted by the House and referred by the Senate plenary to the Committee on Ways and Means. In a divided court, the score was 8-5. They affirmed that the Senate can even propose a substitute deal. But our problem with the ABS-CBN franchise, Mr. President, is wala pa ho sa atin yung uh, House bill kasi nga po, nagbago ng isip, kagaya po ng sinabi ni Mr. Senate President, ang lower house dahil kailangan nilang sigurong mag-comply doon sa three days separate readings na 
inaatas din ng saligang batas. So wala pa ho talaga sa atin yung yung uh, appropriate house bill. Doon naman sa kaisa-isa pangalawang kaso, Alvarez versus Gingona, ito po yung municipality of Santiago na ginawang city of Santiago sa Isabela, nagkaroon din po ng kaso sa Supreme Court. Subalit yung yung kaso pong yon, yung house bill po ng uh, Santiago Isabela ay nakarating po sa Senate Uh, committee on Local Government at naka-first reading po sa ating uh, Senado. Dito po sa kaso ng ABS-CBN, hindi pa po nakakarating sa Senado. Kaya I heard the appropriate term from the lips of the Senate President that this hearing might be premature. Ang atin pong ihihir ngayon ay four Senate bills. It has nothing to do with the House bill which we don't know yet the shape, hubris, and form of how and when it will come out from the legislative mill of the lower house. Yun po ang ating problema, Mr. President, uh, Mr. Chairman. We might be uh, violating the Constitution if we hear a bill uh, in anticipation of a bill which has not yet been passed. Although I might be, it might be proven, argued otherwise, because we have some Supreme Court cases, But the Tolentino uh, Secretary of Finance case is very clear. Meron pong finile na ka-file sa Senate na transmit officially ng Secretary of the House, na receive ng Secretary of the Senate, pinasa sa first reading, at nakarating po sa ating uh, Pumite ng Ways and Means. So, with that reservation, Mr. President, I, I continuously, I would continuously invoke on constitutional grounds my reservations that dapat po siguro itakel na rin natin sa tamang panahon yung Senate House Bill 6732. Sa kadahilanan po kung tayo ay magkakamali dito at ito po ay ma-strike down ng Supreme Court, eh sayang po yung pinagpagura natin at baka ma-overturn po yung bill na lalabas, yung batas na lalabas at matigil na naman po yung ABS-CBN kung sakali. So uh, having said that, Mr. President, I, I paraphrase the the words of uh, uh, my my namesake, who was the petitioner in the case of Tolentino versus Secretary of uh, of Finance. When the reason to commence a hearing does not exist, we cannot commence our hearing, Mr. Chairman. But I I will not move for a deferment of this uh, hearing. Just like my other colleagues, siguro pakikinggan ko na lang, pero my, my, my reservation uh, stance, atin pong darating po sa yugto na we will be here. Maraming salamat, uh, Mr. Chair, sa pagkakataong binigay niyo. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Chair, 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 after the minority floor leader, this is Senator Zubiri, as your majority floor leader and chairman of rules. After Senator Gillon, I'd like to be recognized yes. as well. Yes, Senator Gillon is recognized. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, just a brief response uh, to our esteemed colleagues. We respect their views. But uh, as a matter of procedure, this, there has been a practice in the Senate wherein bills which are which is which are supposed to originate from the house can be heard substantially only and uh, not strictly a uh, hearing of the house bill the rule is we can conduct hearings on the ebs cbn franchise for example but but there can be no report submitted to the Senate as an institution without this, the House bill being before us. We have been doing this for years. This is our tradition. This is our precedent. The budget is heard by the Senate uh, as early as August, even before the House could approve their version. Technically, that bill is also supposed to originate from the house but we do conduct hearings and we do not report out 
the budget until the uh, House bill is before us. I think that's very clear. So I don't think that we can, we should tarry any further on this issue. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Thank Chairman. You. Senator Zabili uh, is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I totally agree with the position taken by the minority floor leader. Uh, first of all, I'd like to greet uh, my former boss, Senator Juan Ponce Enrile. I was also his majority floor leader in the 14th Congress, and to all my colleagues. Uh, by tradition and practice, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, in my experience in the 14th, 15th, as well as the six, uh, 17th and 18th Congress, that's almost four Congresses, where we tackled the bills on uh, bills of the budget, which is the General Appropriations Act, as well as uh, taxation measures, we can hear this simultaneously with the House. Because if we are strict about it, as chairman of your rules committee, that means we would have to wait for the House to approve the budget within uh, their jurisdiction prior to taking it up in the Senate. By tradition and practice, we take it simultaneously. We take up this bill simultaneously with the House of Representatives, although we withhold the submission of a committee report until it is transmitted to the uh, Senate for further action in plenary. Pero nakahanda na po yan. The committee reports are already, it's just not signed, it has not been submitted uh, and filed. So I see no violation of the origination clause of the uh, 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 Constitution when it comes to the tackling of these measures today. We can tackle these measures today and the chairperson can just withhold the submission and filing of the committee report for action so that we don't waste uh, today's uh, uh, hearings, uh, Mr. Pre Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And I hope my colleagues uh, would agree with me on that because, uh, as again, on my uh, experience and by tradition, we tackle these measures uh, simultaneously. We can tackle these measures simultaneously with the House of Representatives. Thank you, Mr. President. President. Mr. President, Mr. Chairman. Um, before Mr. Senator, Chairman. Senator, I would like to recognize the President again. Just a uh, rejoinder, uh, Mr. President. Uh, um, the, the, the point raised by the minority leader is correct. As long as we do not come up with a committee report uh, on this particular hearing or meeting, whatever you would want to call it, then there is no uh, violation. My point when I, um, uh, when I made my opening statement is that uh, I elect to reserve my questions and uh, my issues and the issues that are being brought up when the House bill arrives. That is my point. Uh, it is up to you to uh, uh, continue or whatever. Uh, or you would like to call it a hearing or a meeting. Mr. Chairman, Sen Senator Lapsa. Just a quick uh, rejoinder also. I have no disagreement with uh, this committee hearing be being held today. My only point is uh, we cannot compare a budget measure with a legislative franchise measure simply because what we are tackling in the Committee on uh, Finance is the NEP, not the House version of the uh, budget measure. Kung natatandaan po ninyo, pag nagko-conduct tayo ng hearing, ang reference po natin na libro o yung materials, yung National Expenditure Program, uh, which is not the House version yet. But of course, we all know that the House version or the uh, House Bill uh, uh, 1 that we uh, refer to is a uh, replica of the National Expenditure Program. But what we are hearing uh, in the Committee of uh, Finance it's not the House bill, but the National Expenditure Program that uh, was submitted by Malacanang to the House of Representatives, of which a copy is uh, also furnished to the Senate. That's all, Mr. President. Senator Tolentino. Mr. Chair, I, I would have mentioned what uh, the good senator from Cavite mentioned a while ago. I, I concur with that statement because both houses are indeed furnished copies of the NEP, but uh, statements recognizing our limitations are correct. The mere fact that even after this hearing, sans a house version under the origination clause without the house bill, we cannot report this out to the floor is indeed an acknowledgement of our legislative 
limitations here. We cannot have that on third reading. So, Mr. Chairman, uh, thank you for uh, our, our, uh, uh, the acknowledgments that uh, there are indeed limitations. We are now in a non-full plenary phase, so to speak, because we can hear this as an anticipatory substitute bill, but we cannot report this out to the floor because of the limitations provided for by the Constitution. Salamat po, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Senator Angara is uh, recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I just want to chime in because the jurisdiction of the committee is being challenged. Uh, I, I share the opinion of former Secretary of Justice, uh, now Senator Drillon, that uh, it has long been the practice of Congress, and I have chaired the Committee on Ways and Means, the Committee on Local Government, and the Committee on Finance, which uh, already tackles bills, not just the NEP, but also local government bills, also revenue measures in anticipation of the uh, bills which have which must originate. And the gentlemen from Cavite, the Senate President, are correct. They must originate in the uh, House in accordance with, uh, with uh, Article 6, Section 24 of the Constitution. But having said that, I don't think the case of Tolentino versus Secretary of Finance is a legal authority uh, for to prohibit us from hearing. Uh, it is legal authority from prohibiting us, as has been said earlier, from passing any uh, bill uh, without taking into account the House bill, because then the bill did not prohibition on us tackling the Senate measures. And I would like to read from uh, Justice Bernas' uh, text on the Constitution, where he says, uh, Tolentino versus Secretary of Finance is a legal authority uh, for to prohibit us from hearing. Uh, it is legal authority for prohibiting us, as has been said earlier, from passing any uh, bill. This uh, what is the uh, volume, Mr. Chairman? There's something. Uh, how, how come I'm hearing myself? Someone has their TV on, I think, Mr. President. Thank you. Okay, Mr. President, I continue. I quote from Bernas. He says, the meaning of origination, referring to originating clause, from the House and the scope of the Senate's power to introduce amendments were thoroughly discussed in the case of Tolentino versus Secretary of Finance in 1994, which involved the value-added tax law. The constitutional rule is that revenue bills must originate exclusively from the House of Representatives. The court said that the exclusivity of the prerogative of the House means simply that the House alone can initiate the passage of a revenue bill, but such that if the House does not initiate one, no revenue law can be passed. But once the House has approved the revenue bill and passed it on to the Senate, the Senate can completely overhaul it by amendment of parts or by amendment by substitution and come out with one completely different from, from what the House had approved. It does not matter whether the Senate already anticipated a bill from the House and formulated one to take the place of whatever the House might send. He's already speaking of anticipatory action, which in a sense, Mr. President, Mr. Chair, is what we are doing here. The court rejected the idea that the Senate is bound to retain the essence of what the other House approved. Textually, it is the bill which must exclusively originate from the House, but the law itself, which is the product of the total bicameral legislative process, originates not just from the House, but from both the Senate and the House. So the case of Tolentino, clearly, Mr. President, is authority for us to have this anticipatory hearing with the limitation that we cannot pass any uh, bill until the House has passed their version. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Angara. Senator Tolentino. One quick return to my uh, esteemed colleague. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, ang sinabi ko po kanina ay yung Tolentino versus uh, Secretary of Finance and even the Alvarez versus Kim Gona case, iba po yung factual setting. Doon po sa kanila, nakarating po sa first reading yung House version. Kaya nahir po ng committee. Dito po sa atin, hindi pa po na, natatransmit officially yung, Senate, yung House Bill 673. Yun po yung pagkakaiba. But I have no questions. Uh, uh, relative to the Tolentino case and uh, the Alvarez case, uh, iba lang po yung factual 
settings po no na Mr. Mr. Chairman. Salamat yeah, po sa natarangga. Mr. Mr. Chairman, even then, with due respect to my uh, fraternal uh, brother, ano, nobody here is saying that we are prohibiting the hearing or the committee. Nobody is challenging it. We're just saying, like in my case, I'm saying I'm I'm uh, saying that because of what happened in the House of Representatives, I am uh, I am not going to ask these questions that I wanted to bring up, you know, as far as issues are concerned. But you can go on with the hearing. And you, there is no challenge. There is no body using the word prohibit. You know, baka yun ang ipikapin ng mga islanta naman ng ano ano ng uh, ng ibang tao eh, di ba? Okay, we just replace that on record. Thank you, Senate President, for clarifying that uh, because of the time limitation of uh, our session days and because of the urgency to the uh, pandemic that's happening in our uh, country, uh, this committee deemed it necessary to have preliminary hearings. But the preliminary hearings will not deal to a committee report. In fact, uh, we will be awaiting for the transmittal of the official version of the uh, House version, hopefully by today. Uh, it was supposed to be transmitted yesterday as the information was cascaded to this representation. However, due to unforeseen circumstances, it, it, it was delayed. So with that, uh, uh, we deemed it necessary to uh, already pursue a preliminary discussion on a potential provisional franchise, issues surrounding a shorter term franchise, and uh, we invited um, uh, legal luminaries and experts who could shed light and history for that matter on the said matter. With that, uh, with that uh, again, we will, uh, uh, at the end of the preliminary hearing, we will not be issuing a committee report. Uh, this is purely uh, anticipatory, exploratory, as well as clarificatory. And uh, we will be uh, discussing issues that will, that can potentially arise um, during the, during the um, uh, transmittal of the House version. Uh, definitely with the statement of the Senate President, uh, we will be conducting another hearing. Uh, as the members well know, to conduct a hearing, we have a three-day rule. That's why with this very limited time frame, eight days for that matter, we are anticipating every single step so that we will catch the end of the session uh, session uh, um, timetable, which is June um, 3, the last day of session. So um, with that, uh, Mr. President, with the kind indulgence again of the members, uh, I would like to pursue the uh, hearing proper. I would like to uh, request uh, the resource person to uh, give us their opinion. Um, we will start with the uh, special request of the Senate President. The Senate President made a special request to invite Senator, former Senator Juan Ponce Enrile and Father uh, Ranilio Aquino to uh, join us today and to uh, participate in our discussion. Um, with that, we will uh, uh, recognize Senator Juan Ponce Enrile for uh, his um, discussions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Senator uh, Sherwin Sher Gajarian. Thank you for inviting me in this uh, discussion. Now, my position is uh, the franchise of ABS-CBN is a law. And that law describes the privileges, the businesses, the activities, and the powers that uh, the franchisee can exercise. And uh, that uh, law also circumscribes or establishes the, li the limiting date when the privilege can be exercised by the grantee. In the case of ABS-CBN, the law says your privilege to engage in the business of mass media broadcasting will end on May 4, 2020, period. It cannot go beyond that, and everything must stop. 
Congress must exercise the power of legislation either to terminate it really as it has been terminated by the law itself or extend it. No other power in our government has the right to extend it a minute or a second. The law must be obeyed, the Constitution must be enforced against anybody in this country. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Senator. Now, you, now as far as uh, provisional authority being given, I have my own doubts whether Congress can do that. Because if you read the Constitution, there is a 50-year limitation on the period of franchises. If you grant an extension, how are you going to treat that extension with respect to the period established by the Constitution with regard to the length of any franchise here? In fact, ABS-CBN has been the oldest uh, broadcast uh, medium in the country. It started with Alto Broadcasting Station, which was given to Tony Aquino, uh, Quirino, during the time of President Quirino. Then it was taken over by uh, the Lopez's. And the Lopez's said, the Chronicle Broadcasting Network, that is why you have ABS-CBN. More than, these things, uh, these three stations have been more than 50 years. They've been uh, extended now and then. Now it expired again, and it's being, ex uh, being extended. It's up to Congress to extend it or not. And that is why we are in this very complex situation. And it is complicated by the fact that there is a pending case in the Supreme Court, which I think must be considered by Congress in acting on this, because although we have the principle of separation of powers between the three departments of government, the Constitution also requires that they must be coordinated so that they will not clash. And I think it's a matter of respect for the Supreme Court, for Congress to recognize that there's, there's a pending case, which must be decided first, because uh, if the Supreme Court will decide the case before it adversely to ABS-CBN, what will happen to the legislative action of Congress granting a new franchise to ABS-CBN? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Senator uh, Juan Ponce and Rile. Senator, you mentioned earlier that you have doubts on this uh, provisional franchise. Can you elaborate further on those doubts? There must be a certain degree of permanence of any legislative action. It cannot be ad hoc. You are not a delegated uh, power like uh, NTC that you can exercise quasi-judicial judi power or quasi-legislative power through rulemaking power that Congress delegates to you. Congress must enact a law. And that law must be complete in every respect. Well, if you can grant, if Congress can grant a temporary franchise, why, what is the impelling or compelling reason for Congress not to uh, grant a permanent with, uh, franchise with a reasonable period of 25 years? Why, why don't you, if you think that there is a national emergency, why don't you ask President Duterte to certify the bill so that you can, you can shorten the period of deliberations? Mr. Chairman, for uh, Senator former Lopez. Senate President Andrile, uh, it is your opinion, sir, that a provisional franchise may not uh, be compliant with the provision of the Constitution on Congress having the power to grant legislative franchise. What if, uh, because there's uh, existing jurisprudence that, we, that the Senate 
once it is transmitted to us, meaning the legislative franchise, we can even amend the House version or the House bill in its entirety. So what if they transmit to us House Bill 6732, uh, granting uh, a temporary or provisional franchise to ABS-CBN, and yet the Senate uh, has decided, as a body, uh, has decided to amend the provisional franchise uh, to make it as a full-time 25-year legislative franchise. I, I think it can be done, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Senate uh, President. And uh, I would like to get to your opinion if uh, that is uh, legally uh, feasible or possible, Mr. Senate President. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator Luxon. When the bill passes, the House of Representatives, and it gets into the jurisdiction of the Senate, the Senate can overturn it. It can do anything it wants about it. You can extend that for uh, five months or a one, one year period to 50 years. You just comply with the 50 year limitation of the Constitution and you're, it will be constitutional. You, you, can, you can amend it, alter it, substitute a new, new bill. That is your power. The power, Sir. the power of origination belongs to, to the House. Once it releases that uh, uh, the bill from there, it loses control and it goes into the hands of the Senate. Then you can do anything with that bill, and whatever is the difference between the House version and the Senate version will be tackled in a conference committee. If you agree, if you don't agree, there is no bill. And this uh, president can veto or approve the bill that uh, will be agreed upon by the two houses. That's, yes, that's the, uh, the, the principle of separation of powers and the, power, the, balance, the balancing powers between the House and the, and the Senate. One is not over the other. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. What you're saying, sir, is uh, if we agree with the House, in granting ABS-CBN a provisional franchise, uh, we could also face constitutional challenge later on. But you if can you go, amend, you, you can go 6732 and grant ABS-CBN a permanent legislative franchise, then it's perfectly okay. Yes, that's perfectly okay. Thank you, sir. I'm, I'm sure the Supreme Court will so say that. Thank you, uh, Senator. Uh, one point, Senator. Senator the, um, what, what is happening right now, no? and from what I understand uh, in the lower house, is in order for EBS to temporarily operate without relinquishing further discussions on the original franchise, which is the 25-year franchise, they deemed it necessary to just approve a shorter-term franchise, hence what they call provisional franchise. This is a fun, their, their idea is to uh, enact a five-month franchise. This is enough time for them to deliberate. Well, for the five-month franchise, it's giving them enough time to deliberate the original 25-year franchise. So in, in other words, this five-month franchise is the standing franchise for now. But at the same time, uh, they are also deliberating a, the original 25-year franchise. How do you reconcile this, uh, Senator, uh, one point, Senator Enrile? How do you reconcile uh, their five-month franchise and the, the original 25 franchise? How do you reconcile this at the end? Alam mo, Mr. Committee Chairman, hindi ko maintindihan. Ano ba ang urgency ng franchise na ibibigay sa kan sa ABS-CBN, tapos na yung termino nila. Negosyo, dapat hihinto. Ngayon, ang urgency ba niyan ay dahil kailangan malaman ng ating mga kababayan ang nangyayari sa ating bansa. My God! In the, the nooks and corners of this republic is rich, not by television but by radio. Our people know what's going on all over the country because of radio. 
more than ABS, CBN, and GMA7, or PDP, or the government station, or all the other TV stations. So the question of in the communication and information is not an issue. The issue here is we must comply with the Constitution. We must comply with the laws. We must follow the rule of law in the country so that wag naman parang linalaro yung saligang batas natin. Otherwise, we will become a banana. Do not use the word provisional. It only uses the word provisional in the explanatory note. Section 6, uh, 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 Section 1, uh, describes the nature and scope of franchise. There is nothing there which says that it is provisional. Uh, section 6, the term of the franchise, and I read, the franchise shall be in effect until October 31, October Senator Frank, let me just interrupt you because uh, your line got cut off. Can you repeat that from the maybe five, 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 maybe five, minute, five minutes backward? All right, I'm sorry. Okay. First, my no, submission. Meet, sorry, meeting is resumed. Okay, can, you, can I be heard, Mr. Chairman? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay, sorry. First, my submission is that the power of Congress to grant a franchise is plenary. The only limitations are those found in the Constitution. And what are these? Number one, origination. It must come from the House. And number two, the term shall not be for more than 50 years. And therefore, as, as, uh, as uh, pointed out uh, by Senator Enrile, the Senate can do anything, amend, uh, repeal, etc. Now. Uh, so I will repeat, there is no uh, limitation on the plenary power of Congress except on the origination and uh, period. Now, the uh, period, uh, an issue is being raised about the uh, characterization of the franchise as provisional. I wish to point out that uh, the uh, House bill uh, as presently crafted uh, under House Bill, uh, uh, under the House Bill 6732, there is nothing in the body of the law which says that it is a provisional franchise. Uh, in se Section 1, defines the nature and scope of the franchise. Nothing there indicates that it is a provisional. Number two, on the term of the franchise, it simply says, shall remain in effect until October 31, 2020. Now, it, it is mentioned in the explanatory note, uh, but uh, the governing uh, uh, portion of the bill, if it becomes law, is the body of the law, not the, not the, uh, not the uh, explanatory note. But even if the explanatory note is argued to be part of the interpretation of the law, to me, it doesn't depart from the fact that the Congress has plenary powers over the franchise, and the fact that it is characterized as provisional does not uh, uh, run afoul with the constitutional power, constitutional plenary power of Congress to grant a franchise. It can impose conditions. Congress can impose conditions because it is an exercise of the sovereign power of the people to grant the franchise. It can impose conditions uh, on the franchise that cannot be questioned. Uh, in so far as the urgency is concerned, Mr. President, it is our respectful submission that uh, it is addressed to uh, the uh, wisdom of, of Congress, whether or not uh, the, the issue is urgent, uh, but that has not got anything to do. But in so far as the Constitution is concerned, uh, that is not uh, an issue. As I would repeat, the matter of urgency is a policy issue addressed to the better judgment and the good judgment of Congress. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Mr. Chairman, just a quick uh, retort, if I may. With all due respect to Senator uh, Drillon, to the distinguished minority leader, uh, the description that he made 
on the body of the bill is at best an assumption because we do not know yet what will come out of the House of Representatives. There is still in the period of interpolation and probably today they will introduce amendments. So we do not uh, know yet the final form of House Bill 6732. So that's only the point I want to raise, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with that, uh, we'd like to recognize Father Aquino. Father, are you are you there? Father, can you hear us? Okay, unmute, uh, Father. Nakikita ko ni Senate President, pero okay, unmute lang. Yeah, okay, I'm mute. Uh, can, can I be heard now, Senator? Yeah, okay, na. Uh, we can hear you now. Okay. Uh, good morning uh, to the members of Senate, and uh, I wish to express my gratitude to Senator Win Gachalian, who graciously invited me to be present today. He has been very helpful to the Cagayan State University, of which I am vice president, aside from my duties to the Graduate School of Law San Beda University, of which I am the dean. Senator Gachalian made me understand that I was to address myself to two issues. First, whether a provisional franchise is constitutional. And second, whether a measure can be passed by the House of Representatives on readings held on the same day. I think it is now settled once and for all that a legislative franchise is necessary. This was laid down very clearly by the Supreme Court in Associated Communications versus National Telecommunications Commission in 2003 in a ponentia written by one of the resource speakers today, whom I revere very much, former Chief Justice Reynato Puno. As correctly mentioned by uh, uh, former Senate President Franklin Delon, aside from the capitalization requirement, Article 12, Section 11 requires only that first, the franchise be non-exclusive. Second, that it should not exceed 50 years. Third, that it should be subject to repeal, alteration, or amendment by Congress. I repeat, Your Honors, there are only three constitutional requirements aside from the capitalization requirement. First, the franchise should not be exclusive. Second, it should not exceed 50 years. Third, it should be subject to repeal, alteration, or amendment by Congress. I wish to make clear that I am making these remarks in answer to a legal question without any uh, specifications as to what kind of bill may emanate later on or now from the lower house. Textually, therefore, there should be no objection to the grant of a franchise characterized as provisional with a lifespan of a few days or a few months. Uh, while I uh, ask with Senator Enrile, another person whom I deeply admire and revere, why we must still tarry with a provisional franchise, if Congress is so minded to pass a provisional franchise, there can be no textual objection to a provisional franchise with a lifespan of a few days or a few months. The power of the legislature to grant a provisional franchise is, as already mentioned, plenary. American jurisprudence second is instructive, and I quote, the term of the duration of franchises is in some instances regulated by express constitutional or statutory provision. In some states, they may be granted only for terms of years. The power of the legislature in this respect, except as restrained by the fundamental law, is plenary and without limit, and it may therefore grant a permanent and a perpetual franchise. Very clearly, too, it may grant a franchise that lasts for only a few days or a few weeks. 
In the case uh, of a French father, uh, uh, hold on. Uh, let me. Uh, well, hearing is uh, resumed. Father, you got cut off. Napotol ho kayo. Can you oh. rewind uh, five minutes back? Uh, midway po. Okay, okay, Senator. Medyo uh, napotol ho kayo. Okay, uh, can I be heard now, Senator? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Textually, therefore, there should be no objection to the grant of a franchise characterized as provisional with a lifespan of a few days or even a few months. While there is a constitutional limit to the breadth of the grant of authority, which is that it must not be longer than 50 years, the Constitution is completely silent where it may be. Power of the legislature to grant a franchise the following citation from American Jurisprudence Second is instructive. The term of the duration of franchises is in some instances regulated by express constitutional or statutory provision. In some states, they may be granted only for terms of years. The power of the legislature in this respect, except as restrained by the fundamental law, is plenary and without limit. It stands to reason, therefore, that if Congress is so minded, it may grant a franchise of only a few days or a few months, and it may grant a franchise of so many years as long as these years do not exceed 50 years. Of course, I can ask together with my esteemed uh, uh, Kababayan, uh, Senator Enrile, Senate President Enrile, whom I respect tremendously, why we must still tarry with a provisional franchise when a permanent franchise can in fact be given. In fact, I raised that question already once, but that is a political issue, a political matter, best left to the judgment of Congress. In the case of a franchise that grants television network authority to operate for a number of days or weeks, then the doctrine is applied that a franchise may be limited by statute or by its own terms. This is found in California Jurisprudence, third edition, part two. As to the second question, the number of required readings, paragraph two, section 36, section 26 of article six is clear. In either house, a bill must pass through three readings on separate days unless the President of the Philippines certifies to the necessity of the immediate enactment. While intercameral courtesy might incline the Senate to refrain from inquiring into the regularity of proceedings in the House of Representatives, this applies only when no constitutional requirement is in issue. Because where a constitutional issue is raised, as the question of the number of readings on separate days, then not only does it behoove the Senate to inquire into the due passage of the bill in the House of Representatives, judicial inquiry will also lie and cannot be foreclosed by the doctrine of the enrolled bill. In a book entitled Legislative Law and Process, Jack Davis cites the requirement of three readings, each on a separate day, as basis for looking into the journals of the chamber concerned to check if the requirement was met. Obviously, it must first be inquired whether there was a presidential certification of urgency. If there was, conflating readings and passage to only one day would be no problem at all. If there was no such certification, then the presumption of regularity of proceedings would still lie in favor of the House of Representatives. Only if the House itself would admit that it did not follow the three reading, three separate days rule, would the Senate be justified in faulting the bill brought before it. Otherwise, the burden of proof would be with the Senate to establish violation of the requirements of the Constitution. Thank you, Your Honors. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Uh, let me also recognize uh, Senator Hontiveras.
just raising her hand. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, actually, kanina sana, uh, after uh, former Senate President Enrile, gusto ko lang sabihin na I couldn't agree more dun sa punto nila na what is preventing us from deliberating on, deciding upon, and uh, 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 approving the uh, grant of franchise to ABS-CBN. Uh, and I have some ideas what has taken us so long. But the situation is, andito tayo sa ngayon, and uh, we have before us um, Senate bills uh, on so-called provisional franchises to ABS-CBN. So I just wanted to affirm, uh, Mr. Chairman, that I appreciate na idinadaos natin uh, ang hearing na ito dahil habang uh, lumalampas na sa tatlong buwan na ipinangako ng executives ng ABS-CBN sa kanilang mga empleyado na tuloy pa rin yung kanilang sweldo, benepisyo, walang matatanggal sa trabaho, habang uh, humahaba yung panahon na Ayon sa ABS-CBN, 30 hanggang 35 milyong piso kada araw ang nawawala sa kanilang kita simula ng ipatigil ng National Telecommunications Commission ang operasyon nila. Uh, habang tumatagal yung panahong ito, uh, ano ang pwedeng mangyari? And a big question is also where will the potentially laid off uh, employees uh, go? Uh, nasa gitna tayo ng isang pandemya, Mr. Chair, hindi na natin kakayanin kapag nadagdagan pa ang mga manggagawang mawawala ng trabaho at kabuhayan. At ang tunot dulo nito, yun na nga pong prangkisang nawala ng visa. And since uh, as various colleagues have said, this is ultimately a legislative question, it is we, members of Congress, who can immediately and effectively uh, solve this problem. And because if we let this case continue to go unresolved, we're not only depriving the Filipino people of timely and accurate information. And on that point, Mr. Chairman, with all due respect, uh, uh, I uh, disagree with the good former Senate President. That is, in fact, part of the urgency of this question. Dahil nga sa panahon ng pandemic, we need more, not fewer channels of information and news to the people, including ABS-CBN, which accounts for more than 40% of audience share. News and information to the people kung papaano makakasurvive sa pandemic at kung papaano makakaraos sa kinakailangang a quarantine. In addition to that, if we don't resolve this issue, Mr. Chairman, we would be pulling the plug on the livelihood of the network's 11,000 plus employees and their families. So uh, just that uh, affirmation, Mr. Chair, of uh, appreciation that we are conducting uh, this hearing. And also finally, because as we proceed, I would like to raise questions and uh, for the proper time, possible proposed amendments towards a pro-worker franchise of ABS-CBN. Salamat, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Antiveros. Uh, I have some questions for Father Aquino, but uh, we want to first hear uh, Chief Justice Puno, who uh, graciously uh, acceded to our invitation. In fact, I've heard, her, heard him over the radio discuss in length uh, some concepts uh, related to ABS-CBN. And uh, thank you very much, Chief Justice, for um, your attendance. And I'd like to recognize you uh, to give your opinion and uh, some of your discussions related to the matter. Chief Justice, CJ, are you there? Uh, can you hear me, uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, CJ, we can hear you uh, clearly. Yes. Thank, uh, you, thank you again for participating. Yes, uh, thank you for uh, the uh, invitation to uh, attend uh, this uh, hearing as a uh, resource uh, person. And uh, I come uh, as a friend of uh, the uh, Senate. I uh, do not uh, come uh, as a uh, partisan in uh, the resolution of uh, these uh, issues. I will uh, limit my, uh, my task to uh, uh, isolating and uh, clarifying uh, the different uh, constitutional uh, issues that uh, confront uh, the uh, Senate uh, in uh, uh, its effort to uh, consider 
the uh, grant of uh, a uh, provisional uh, authority to uh, ABS uh, CBN. Uh, I would not uh, 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 <coughs> advise uh, the uh, Senate on what uh, particular uh, action uh, to take uh, that would be uh, interfering with uh, the options uh, that can be taken by uh, the Senate. Uh, and uh, I will be uh, presumptuous uh, if uh, I do so. Uh, having uh, said that, uh, preparatorily, uh, uh, listening to uh, the uh, various uh, comments of uh, the uh, senators, uh, the uh, legal uh, issues that uh, confront uh, the Senate in this uh, endeavor are uh, so many. And uh, I uh, really uh, uh, would not know uh, how to start. But uh, let me uh, first uh, react to the uh, expert uh, opinion of uh, Father uh, Radito uh, Aquino. The uh, first uh, question that uh, he tackled is uh, whether Congress has uh, the power to uh, give a uh, provisional uh, authority to operate to ABS uh, CBN by uh, means of uh, a law. I join the uh, opinion of uh, Father Aquino that uh, indeed uh, the uh, Senate uh, has, uh, has this uh, power together uh, with uh, the House of uh, Representatives to grant uh, this uh, provisional uh, authority. And uh, this is a uh, very uh, basic uh, issue that has been uh, settled in uh, uh, constitutional uh, law and uh, jurisprudence. And uh, let me uh, just uh, read uh, the opinion of uh, Cooley on uh, constitutional uh, limitations. Uh, Cooley is uh, one of the uh, giants of uh, constitutional law in the whole world. And uh, his uh, opinions have been uh, adopted by uh, uh, high courts uh, all over uh, the world. On this uh, issue, let me uh, uh, briefly uh, read what uh, Cooley uh, stated. He said, where a general power is uh, conferred or uh, duly enjoined, every particular power necessary for the exercise of uh, the one or the performance of the other is also conferred. This is uh, necessary for a uh, constitution from its very nature cannot enter into a uh, minute specification of all the minor powers naturally and obviously included in it and flowing from the great and important ones which are expressly granted. The implication uh, under this rule must, however, be uh, necessary and not merely conjectural or uh, argumentative. It is uh, given, and uh, Senator Drillon has uh, well uh, articulated 
that uh, what is uh, involved here is the power to uh, legislate to grant a uh, franchise by means of a law and the power to legislate is uh, the essence of uh, legislative power and this is granted to uh, congress by virtue of uh, our uh, separation of uh, powers The uh, submission, uh, therefore, and uh, this is uh, the view of uh, Cooley and Black, adopted uh, almost by uh, all the courts uh, in the world, is that uh, the, 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 when you have uh, the grant of a general power, that will include the grant of all powers that are necessary, proper, and incidental to the grant of uh, the general power. The general power here granted is the power to enact laws. And all other uh, necessary powers, all incidental powers, to make effective the exercise of the power to legislate all that uh, power should be granted to congress and uh, this uh, view of uh, Cooley of uh, that have been uh, adopted by uh, our uh, supreme court well i can uh, furnish uh, uh, the senate with uh, the uh, cases where uh, this uh, doctrine has been adopted by uh, the High Court. So uh, we come to the uh, second view of uh, Father Aquino on uh, the uh, necessity of uh, complying with uh, the uh, constitutional uh, provision on uh, uh, requiring uh, separate uh, readings of uh, a bill on uh, different uh, dates. A few days uh, ago, uh, this uh, area of uh, concern was, was raised in the uh, House uh, itself. Uh, I uh, think uh, this was uh, raised by, uh, among others, Congressman uh, Lagman and uh, Congressman uh, uh, Rufus uh, Rodriguez. And uh, yesterday, uh, listening to uh, the uh, deliberations uh, in the House, uh, it would seem that uh, the House has taken uh, a uh, remedial uh, action to comply with this uh, provision, the House has, uh, I understand, recalled uh, the bill, and uh, the bill is now uh, undergoing uh, uh, debates in uh, in uh, in uh, in uh, the House. Uh, so uh, uh, perhaps uh, that uh, issue should uh, no longer uh, be. Uh, discuss uh, even uh, uh, submitting the uh, thesis that uh, indeed that uh, should have been uh, followed by the House of uh, Representatives. The uh, House should have followed that because that is a provision that is mandatory in character. It is not merely a directory in nature in the sense that uh, the house can uh, or has the option not uh, to follow it all uh, provisions of uh, the constitution in general are considered as mandatory in nature but uh, as i said uh, that is uh, an issue that uh, seems to be uh, moot now considering that uh, remedial action has been uh, taken uh, by uh, the house but uh, having uh, said that 
a uh, legal uh, situation of uh, uh, the House uh, bill uh, on uh, provisional authority being uh, uh, granted to ABS is uh, still uh, very murky, very uh, confused. The uh, bill that is uh, being uh, discussed is uh, what we call a uh, a work in uh, progress. We do not know uh, what is the uh, what will be the final uh, shape of uh, the bill, whether uh, the House will uh, come out uh, with a bill uh, granting uh, provisional authority, or whether the House will uh, uh, grant uh, the renewal of uh, of uh, the uh, of the law granting a uh, franchise to uh, ABS. Uh, CBN. And these are uh, important uh, facts to consider. Why? Because of uh, Article uh, 6, Section uh, 24 of uh, the uh, Constitution. I uh, draw your attention to this uh, provision. And uh, it, it uh, states, uh, among others, that uh, all uh, private uh, bills shall uh, originate uh, exclusively in the House of uh, Representatives, but uh, the Senate may uh, propose or uh, concur with uh, amendments. You look uh, closely at this uh, provision. It has two uh, important parts. The first part uh, provides that uh, private uh, bills, among others, shall uh, originate uh, exclusively in uh, the House of uh, Representatives. And uh, the second part uh, provides that the Senate may propose or concur with amendments. So the uh, first part would uh, demand a proper understanding of uh, the word uh, originate. And the second part would uh, call for uh, a proper understanding of uh, the extent of uh, the powers of uh, the Senate to propose or uh, concur with uh, amendments on bills that uh, exclusively uh, originate uh, from uh, the House of uh, Representatives. I think uh, uh, there has been a lot of uh, discussion on uh, the uh, meaning of uh, of uh, the word uh, originate, a lot of discussion also uh, with respect to uh, the parameters of uh, power of uh, the Senate to propose or concur with the uh, amendments on bills uh, originating uh, uh, from uh, the House. And uh, reference uh, has been made to uh, the case of uh, uh, Tolentino versus uh, Secretary of uh, Finance. Uh, indeed, uh, that was uh, a uh, decision uh, promulgated by uh, the Supreme Court, uh, if I uh, remember, way back in uh, 19. Uh, 96 and uh, 1995 uh, or 1996. Uh, anyway, uh, I was a member of uh, the court at that time when uh, that uh, decision uh, was uh, promulgated. Uh, let me say that uh, that case uh, indeed uh, discuss uh, the uh, meaning of uh, the word uh, 
originate. And uh, according to the uh, ponente of uh, the decision, Mr. Associate is uh, Vicente Mendoza. Originate uh, means uh, initiate. So uh, his thinking is that uh, if uh, there is already uh, a uh, move on the part of uh, any member of uh, the House to initiate uh, a, a bill, a, a local bill or a private uh, bill, then uh, the uh, powers of uh, the uh, Senate to uh, propose or to concur with amendments already kicks in. However, uh, that, uh, that uh, viewpoint of uh, Mr. Justice uh, Mendoza garnered only uh, the full concurrence of uh, about uh, three or four uh, members of uh, the uh, Supreme Court. In other words, uh, we cannot call it a doctrine because uh, it did not uh, gather the majority vote of uh, the 15 uh, members of uh, the court. In fact, uh, several uh, separate uh, opinions were uh, written by, uh, among others, uh, the uh, Chief Justice uh, at uh, that time, Chief Justice uh, Narbasa, Justice uh, Cruz, Justice uh, Regalado, Justice uh, Padilla, Justice uh, Feliciano, and uh, others where uh, they, uh, they uh, did not agree with uh, the interpretation uh, made by uh, Mr. Justice Mendoza that the word uh, uh, originate merely means uh, initiate. Let me uh, read, for instance, the uh, opinion, the separate uh, opinion of uh, Chief uh, Justice uh, Narbasa on uh, the meaning of originate. And this is uh, what uh, he said. Origination should have no reference to the time of uh, conception, but to the affirmative act which effectively puts the bicameral legislative procedure in, in motion. That is the transmission by one chamber to the other of a bill for its uh, adoption. And I think this was uh, the point uh, being uh, raised by uh, some uh, members of uh, the Senate, particularly uh, Senator uh, Francis uh, Tolentino. My, my, my uh, point is that uh, the, the meaning of the word uh, origination is not uh, that clear, even given the uh, interpretation made by uh, Mr. Justice uh, Mendoza in the Tolentino case. In fact, uh, all the members of uh, the court who participated uh, in that uh, decision have long been uh, retired. They are all out. And nine of them are already dead. So uh, what is the proper uh, interpretation of the word uh, uh, originate? Does that uh, mean that uh, the Senate uh, should uh, await the uh, transmission of uh, the uh, final uh, draft of uh, the bill passed by uh, the House of uh, Representatives? 
is at the point of transmission, the time when uh, the uh, powers of uh, the uh, Senate to propose or to concur with amendments start. That is a question that uh, the uh, Senate uh, has uh, to consider. There is that uh, other uh, issue about uh, the uh, extent of uh, the uh, powers of uh, the Senate to concur or uh, propose uh, amendments. Is there a uh, limitation to uh, the power of uh, the Senate to propose or uh, concur with uh, amendments? My, uh, my uh, submission is that uh, there is no uh, uh, limitation on uh, the uh, power of uh, the Senate to uh, concur or to uh, propose uh, amendments. The, uh, the power to uh, enact laws is uh, given to both the House and uh, the uh, Senate. And uh, in the matter of uh, making laws, these uh, two houses are co-equal. If uh, you limit uh, the uh, power of uh, the uh, Senate in lawmaking, you will be uh, making their, this power, which is conjunctively given, uh, and uh, that will uh, you know, degrade the, the uh, power of uh, the uh, Senate to participate in uh, lawmaking. There are uh, other uh, issues which uh, have to be uh, tackled with uh, respect to uh, how uh, this uh, Senate uh, Bill uh, 1521 uh, should be uh, crafted. And uh, when we uh, reach uh, that point, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would uh, also uh, express my humble uh, opinions. But uh, for uh, the uh, present, that is all my uh, submission. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chief Justice Puno. And uh, before we uh, recognize Senator Tolentino, let me greet you a belated happy birthday. And you turned uh, 80 years old last Sunday in the midst of uh, COVID. Uh, let me recognize Senator Tolentino. Uh, Mr. Chief Justice, just one clarificatory question. You probably might have skipped the, uh, the origination, initiation, uh, that would, uh, definition that would trigger a Senate action, uh, Mr. Chief Justice, if I, if I may, uh, if you may clarify that again. Hello. Personally, so far as orig origination clause is concerned. Thank you, Mr. Chief Justice. Yes, uh, well, uh, personally, and uh, it's a uh, personal uh, opinion, I uh, favor the uh, school of thought that uh, the uh, Senate has uh, to wait for uh, the uh, formal uh, transition of uh, the bill that uh, has been uh, approved by the House. To me, there is uh, a uh, great uh, value for uh, the House to uh, await the uh, transition of uh, the bill uh, coming from uh, the House of uh, Representatives. Obviously, uh, there is a uh, high uh, purpose for uh, the uh, Constitution to uh, make this uh, sequence of uh, acts and uh, events. We all know that uh, on the matter of, uh, of uh, bills of uh, local application, private uh, bills uh, 
a uh, primary uh, uh, consideration should uh, be given to the deliberations in the House of uh, Representatives. And uh, the reason uh, for that is that uh, the uh, representatives from uh, the House represent uh, a distinct uh, viewpoint the viewpoint that uh, comes from uh, the districts that uh, they are uh, representing. This uh, value would uh, be lost if uh, the Senate uh, does not uh, await the uh, final uh, form of uh, the bill that uh, would uh, be uh, enacted by uh, the House of uh, representatives well of course uh, uh, some uh, senators uh, say that uh, uh, the practice uh, is uh, different the uh, senate can uh, take uh, some uh, preliminary uh, steps uh, delay the submission of a, uh, a of, a, of the uh, committee uh, report but in the interest of time, these uh, preliminary steps uh, can uh, be uh, taken. I, I'm not uh, passing judgment on uh, the constitutionality of uh, this uh, practice. But my personal opinion is that uh, it is best to await the uh, transmission of uh, the final uh, bill that uh, would be coming from uh, the House of uh, Representatives. Mr. Chairman, just a follow-up question. Just to be more specific, Mr. Uh, Chief Justice, when you say, uh, when you find that the Senate should wait for the final uh, transmittal of the uh, House version, you're also repairing, or you don't uh, make any distinction between the plenary action and the committee action. Uh, is that correct, yes. Mr. Chief Justice? Yes, it is best, of course, to hear the final sense of the House of Representatives. In other words, the the Senate should should wait for that bill already in its final form. That bill, which already contains and expresses the wisdom of the members of the House. Uh, I think that is uh, the more appropriate uh, step uh, to take. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, can I react to Chief yes, Justice uh, Henry, let, Before I recognize you, let me uh, acknowledge the oh. presence of uh, Senator Pacquiao, who's uh, virtually with us. Before I recognize Senator Henry, let me recognize Senator Dillon, who's been raising his hands for a while. Senator Dillon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just uh, for the uh, record, uh, our practice is that once the House approves on final reading, third and final reading, their version of bills that passed originally from the House, that bill, once it reaches the Senate, is referred to the committee, and the committee conducts a hearing on that, that bill. Now, so the proceedings that we are doing now is, uh, can be equated to a meeting because it is not technically a hearing that uh, the House that uh, uh, is uh, on, on the subject of a House bill. But let me repeat, when the House version comes to the Senate, it is set for hearing. The committee hears that House bill the report is uh, submitted to plenary. What is submitted for consideration is the House bill, not the Senate bill. And therefore, it complies with the standard in, uh, which the uh, Chief Justice Puno has mentioned, to which I fully agree. Except that as a matter of practice, we do it. We are conscious. The House bill that is referred to the committee for deliberation, and that House bill is the one reported out. Thank you very much, Mr. Trevor. Mr. Chairman, just a uh, clarification. 
what we are doing this morning, is it a meeting or a hearing? Mr. President, Mr. Chairman. Well, it should be a, a hearing because there was a formal notice uh, for hearing that was issued to the members as well as the resource persons, Mr. President. So for the record, this is not a meeting. This is a hearing, a committee hearing. Correct, Mr. President. Preliminary. Uh, preliminary. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I, I, also, uh, I heard the uh, chairman uh, announce that uh, there will be a uh, second uh, committee uh, hearing to be uh, conducted uh, next week. And uh, this uh, will uh, be done uh, precisely to await the, uh, the final uh, version of uh, the House bill. If uh, that is uh, done, uh, I would like to think that uh, uh, whatever uh, question on uh, the application of this uh, origination uh, doctrine uh, would uh, vanish. Thank you, CJ. Senator uh, Drillon. Uh... Yeah. Uh, regardless of how we denominate the hearing today, whether a meeting, a conference, or a hearing, what is relevant is that we hear the House version when it reaches us. Uh, that's all that I'm saying. Uh, uh, what is controlling is the fact that we will hear the House version when it reaches us. So all these, these preliminary meetings as, uh, as uh, characterized by Chief Justice, there is nothing illegal or unconstitutional about it because what is uh, what the planner will finally consider is the House bill after the House bill is referred to the Senate. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Mr. Thank you. Chairman. Senator Rilens, recognize. I would like to react to the statement of the good Chief Justice Puno. I agree with him that bills changing the names of a street, a school, or a structure, or uh, a town, a barangay, or anything, should uh, begin in the House of Representatives. Now, if that his opinion is correct in that, will that apply to bills like appropriating money for the national government, raising revenue, changing tariffs, incurring loans, or uh, uh, legislation bearing on national interest. You know, we have to coordinate this with the provision of the Constitution that either House of Congress can conduct hearings in aid of legislation. When uh, you conduct uh, hearings in aid of legislation, you can ask any question, inquire on any subject, whether there is a bill pending or not, because the purpose of that provision is to educate the legislators about national issues and national problems. If we are going to follow Chief Justice Puno's position, we will become too rigid in our legislative functions. That is my knowledge of the Constitution, and that is my experience under the 1935 Constitution and all the Constitution that followed after that. I would like his reaction. Should uh, consider. Uh, uh, okay, so, so, uh, Chief Justice, uh, may we request your reaction, please? Yes, uh, uh, with due uh, respect to uh, former uh, Senate President uh, Enrile, uh, let us uh, bear in mind that uh, two kinds of uh, laws uh, are uh, within the uh, power of uh, Congress to promulgate. The uh, first kind would uh, refer to uh, what uh, we call as uh, laws of uh, general application. In uh, this kind of uh, laws, the uh, Constitution uh, is uh, clear that uh, 
what uh, houses can uh, tackle uh, the uh, low, uh, not in a sequential uh, basis. What uh, houses can uh, initiate the law, deliberate uh, on the law without any uh, restriction? But we are uh, talking here of a uh, special kind of a law. Laws uh, of uh, local application and uh, private uh, bills and uh, so on. This, this is a different uh, kind of a law because of the additional constitutional provision on origination. The provision uh, of uh, the Constitution particularly states that... Uh, that I just want to... A, Mr. A Deep Justice, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I just want to let you know that revenue laws applies to the country in general. Income yes, taxation, yes. what, everything. Appropriation law applies to the nation, everything. Yes, uh, but... It uh, simply... Uh, the Constitution simply says that it must originate in the House. If your theory is correct, then will Senate, the Senate stop working and just wait there without studying the revenue laws and appropriation laws that are coming to it, or the tariff bills, or the loans that the government will be planning to incur? If you are oh. going to restrict the sequence that you are proposing, my, my uh, submission uh, uh, that... to, to the gentleman, to Chief Justice, and to uh, Senator Lee for an orderly discussion that does uh, allow the uh, resource person to finish their conversation, their, their discussion, so that we can follow also. Uh, mm -hmm. Senator Ping and I are uh, intently listening, and uh, <laughs> for, in, with all due respect, for an orderly discussion, uh, let's uh, allow the resource person to finish. Uh, Senator CJ? Uh, Senator CJ, Chief Justice Puno. Yes, my uh, my uh, submission is that uh, in uh, interpreting this uh, origination uh, provision, of course uh, we we should not uh, resort to a uh, liter a literal uh, interpretation that uh, would. Uh, result in uh, in uh, an interpretation uh, that is not uh, appropriate to the spirit of uh, the constitution i'm saying that uh, we we do not uh, interpret uh, this uh, provision the same way that uh, we interpret uh, the origination of uh, private uh, bills and the origina origination of uh, appropriation of bills uh, and so on and so forth. I'm saying that uh, we, we should have that uh, kind of uh, space, that kind of uh, elasticity, so that uh, we are able to, uh, to, uh, to, to serve the spirit of uh, the Constitution. That is uh, all uh, what uh, I'm saying. We should not uh, resort to interpretations that uh, would uh, result in absurdity. Thank you, CJ. Thank uh, you, Mr. Mr. Chief Justice. Me... With the permission of the chair. Uh, thank yes. you, Mr. Chief Justice. Yes. My position is that both houses of Congress, the Senate and the uh, House of Representatives, can conduct public hearings on any subject of legislation except changing the names of barangays, of streets and so forth. Those are private bills or granting citizenship to a particular person. That is a private bill. But in the case of orig uh, bills originating from the house, like appropriation, revenue bills of whatever nature, tariffs, and domestic and foreign loans, both houses and plenary sessions to conduct hearings in aid of their function to legislate at any time, anywhere, without restriction. 
you. Thank you. Senator uh, Tolentino is recognized. Yes, Mr. Chair. Just, just to, a, on another topic. Yes, a quick uh, housekeeping uh, manifestation. This committee is in receipt of a uh, communication coming from the National Telecommunications Commission, uh, Commissioner Gamaliel Cordova, explaining his uh, absence today given the sensitivity of the issues involved and the pending cases before the Supreme Court. Uh, Mr. Chair, do we uh, note and acknowledge the, the reasons given by uh, Chairman Commissioner Gamaliel Cordova? Senator Tolitino, this committee has also received uh, letters from the Office of the Solicitor General as well as the NTC. Uh, basically uh, explaining their absence uh, for today's hearing and invoking sub judice as their primary reason. Which, um, so uh, we recognize and we uh, will put that into the records. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, we're also, uh, Father Aquino is also raising his hands and he is recognized. Father, are you still there? Father, okay, unmute po. Naka-mute po kayo. Naka-mute po. Yeah, uh, Senator, yeah. yes. Uh, may I just join, uh, may I just chime into the discussion uh, on this uh, initiation thing? Number one, there is no doubt that the franchise is a private bill. And therefore, by constitutional mandate, it must originate in the lower house. When Tolentino versus Secretary of Finance was decided, the Supreme Court clarified the word originate and said it must be initiated by the lower house. But that will not preclude Senate from modifying it entirely, overhauling it entirely. And it will not matter that it is the Senate version that is eventually passed and not the version of the lower house. So the only requirement is that the bill should originate in the lower house. That there is nothing, however, in the text of the decision, nor in the Constitution, that precludes Senate from conducting inquiries in aid of legislation, even anticipated legislation. So there are two things here. The power to pass the bill is limited only by the constitutional requirement that it, Senate must await what is sent it by the lower house insofar as the franchise is concerned. But to conduct hearings like this, to enable the senators to inform themselves, there is nothing in the Constitution really that uh, bars that or even limits it. Uh, that is all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, uh, this representation has already... Uh, uh, intimated that we will conduct uh, another hearing once the House of Representatives transmits the official version that is being discussed on the floor. Uh, we anticipate that it will be uh, second reading will be concluded today, hopefully, and by next Monday it will be transmitted to the Senate. By then, we will uh, uh, consider that official bill and uh, we will conduct another hearing so that uh, the centers can participate and comment on that uh, bill. Uh, today is really to uh, anticipate some of the uh, discussions being, con being, being uh, talked about, some of the discussions in the lower house, uh, so that uh, we will be guided accordingly once that uh, bill uh, is transmitted to the Senate. Uh, with that, uh, I think uh, because of that uh, pronouncement, uh, we can already move on from the uh, topic of the originating uh, clause of the Constitution and more on the um, more on the subs not, not substantive but more on the uh, core um, uh, core issue of the provisional franchise and um, we also invited ABS-CBN uh, today uh, it's represented by the president uh, of the ABS-CBN, uh, Mr. Carlo Katigba. Uh, I read the transcript, no? Binasa ko po yung transcripts sa house, uh, both last week and yesterday. And uh, ABS 
uh, was never invited in that uh, uh, discussion in the lower house. So um, I just want to ask ABS-CBN, what is their opinion? And uh, will they accept this shorter term, this provisional franchise, which is termed at five months? Uh, will they accept it? And what is their uh, view on that? Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much for recognizing uh, ABS-CBN. Uh, at this point in time, our primary concern is to try and get back on the air as quickly as possible. And uh, we leave it to Congress jointly to decide what's the best way for us to legally uh, return to the air. But it is critical from a financial standpoint and from an employee welfare standpoint that we return, uh, we, we go back on air as quickly as possible, Your Honor. <laughs> If a provisional franchise until October is the quickest way to get us back on air, then we accept that uh, with the hopes, of course, that we continue to have hearings to um, grant us the 25-year franchise. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Katigba. Uh, yeah, um, sorry, I just test if, this can, if I can be heard, Mr. Chair. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, so I was saying earlier that um, at this point, the most important priority for ABS-CBN is to return on air as quickly as possible. Uh, we need to do this so that we can again start um, earning revenues so that we can continue paying salaries of uh, our employees. If the provisional franchise uh, valid until October is the quickest way to get us back on air, then we accept that with the hopes that Congress will continue hearings uh, so that eventually we can secure, hopefully, our 25-year franchise. Mr. Chairman. Are, are you? Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Katigba. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, Senator Lule. Well, um, may I inter, uh, intervene with the Go permission ahead. of the chair? Instead of uh, giving a provisional franchise to ABS-CBN, why not amend the National Telecommunication uh, Commission's uh, authorization to grant it the power to extend so that if the Supreme Court will make a decision, there is no collision between Congress and the Supreme Court. It, why not delegate that power to the NTC, the power to, ex, to give a provisional permit to the agencies under it when their charters or franchises had expired? Instead of going granting a very short period franchise and then it ends, and if the the matter is not resolved with finality, then you will extend again. You will be tinkering with the Constitution as if it were a statute. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Senator. Thank Lee. you. Uh, to uh, Mr. Katigbak again, so, so, ngayon hindi kayo nag-ooperate. Yung mga empleyado ninyo ay sumesweldo pa rin. Uh, Your Honor, when we were taken off the air on May uh, 5th, we made the commitment to our employees, given the um, difficult economic situation following COVID-19, we made the commitment to them that we would not take away any jobs for three months. Um, we continue to lose a substantial amount of money every month, Your Honor, and I'm afraid that uh, if we cannot get back on air soon, by August, we may already have to consider uh, beginning a retrenchment process, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. So from now till August, uh, you have committed to your employees that they will be receiving salaries and everyone will be uh, maintained uh, as employed. That's right, Mr. Chair, because uh, we decided that it would be very difficult for any employee that was laid off to find another job in this current situation 
and we felt it would be very, very painful to put our employees out on the street without them having an idea as to how they could continue earning a living and uh, continue to feed their families, Your Honor. But unfortunately, we cannot make that commitment open-ended because we are also limited by, by financial constraints. From an operation standpoint, um, uh, if you are given a short-term five-month franchise, can you uh, immediately operate? Or do you will need some amount of time to uh, jumpstart your operation? With permission from Congress and a, an authority from the MTC, we can resume our operations immediately, Mr. Chair. Senator Tolentino. Mr. Chair, uh, one question uh, addressed to uh, Mr. Katigbak, perhaps just a uh, harbinger of the things to come. Uh, we've heard a lot of uh, news emanating from the House that there would be a 10% uh, fee that would accrue to the government in terms of the advertising. So we've been, we've been hearing of new, new things that would probably, and this is very conjectural, I'm not saying that uh, a provisional or uh, a franchise would be granted, but uh, looking at uh, our chair, Senate, Senator Gachalian, we've been trying to wrestle on the new normal for basic education. We've been trying to ask the PTB4 and perhaps IBC13 to be part of the new mode of delivery for educational uh, services, learning tools. Would they be a CBN? If ever granted a franchise, be willing to provide the Department of Education in providing uh, modules for far-flung areas in the Philippines, especially with the, with the social distancing uh, requirements right now, with the inability of teachers to uh, provide new learning tools. Would ABSCBN be willing to help uh, assist the Department of Education in providing basic quality education for, for our learners and students? Your Honor, Mr. Chair, uh, soon after the COVID-19 pandemic hit, our management team got together and one of the initiatives we decided to pursue was to create a team that would focus solely on using our media assets for education and for child development. So our answer is yes, absolutely, we are willing to help the government in creating an educational uh, program uh, under the new normal. So, uh, Mr. Katigbak, in short, um, you are um, amenable to being given a shorter term uh, franchise in order to operate immediately. Uh, Mr. Chair, our, our end objective is hopefully to secure a 25 year franchise. But yes, if securing a short term franchise is the fastest way to go back on air, then we have no objection to that, Your Honor. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Senator Zubiri? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, uh, may I just ask uh, uh, Mr. Carlo Katigbak a few questions just uh, to clarify. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Carlo, if uh, Mr. Katigbak, if there is a threat of uh, you losing your uh, frequencies uh, due to the non-action, let's say, of Congress, if there's a delay, because I know, you know, Mr. Chairman, uh, Coming up with a franchise renewal or even application for franchise, we know it's a very difficult process at this, as it is already uh, is with uh, applying with Congress and the Senate. But even a, a more difficult process is accessing frequency. Uh, and that is why uh, there's a free TV frequencies allotted and radio frequencies allotted to these companies who have uh, uh, congressional franchises. However, if they lose the frequency, Technically, they'll be starting from uh, scratch. Uh, am I correct, uh, Mr. Katigbak? Uh, that's largely correct, uh, Mr. Chair. We have built a national radio and television network, uh, and the transmitters were built around the frequencies that were granted to us. Those transmitters are specific to the particular frequency that we operate in. So yes, if we lose the frequencies that are assigned to us, it will be another substantial investment in equipment and time before we can get back on air, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Chairman. And uh, 
it could also mean that uh, if you lose your frequencies, for example, your radio frequency at uh, 630 in AM, I know the AM frequencies are already quite full, uh, including the FM frequencies are already quite full. So if that is taken away from you, uh, the most likelihood of you being able to get another frequency would be very difficult. Is that correct, Mr. Kating? In my opinion, that's correct, Mr. Chair. And that doesn't just apply to radio. The um, analog broadcast frequencies are uh, also almost all taken up already, uh, Mr. Chair. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, to Mr. Katikbak, there is a dire need to be able to have a franchise immediately so that you may maintain these frequencies from the National Telecommunications Corporate, uh, Commission. Is that correct, uh, Mr. Katikbak? Uh, I agree with you, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. Yes, therefore, there's a, there, there really is a need, Mr. President, uh, Mr. Chairman, to act on the particular petitions uh, of uh, ABS-CBN due to the fact that uh, they will not just uh, lose operations, but they may also lose uh, their frequencies, uh, which I feel is not fair. Um, unless their franchise is outright rejected or vetoed, then we should give them a fighting chance to be able to continue their um, uh, operations, uh, Mr. Chairman. And thus, uh, I am in the opinion that, uh, of course, I would like to give or to grant or to move later on, once the House version is here, to grant a longer period of 25 years, which is the pro forma measure that we actually take up almost all the time. But in the uh, uh, due to the uh, uh, circumstances, if the House passes a, a shorter franchise, as long as it, for me, in my personal opinion, it does not uh, go lower than a year, Mr. President, uh, for them to be able to uh, vent out their uh, problems with their colleagues in the House of, Rep House of Representatives or answer the issues of the House of Representatives. And I, I point to the fact, Mr. Chairman, that at least no less than a year, because if you grant at five months uh, today, if we look at our calendar, we are at synergy break on June 4th we start our break. And then we come back on July 27, technically for the State of the Nation address of the president. Technically, you lose a month and a half. And then you uh, come towards the season of, uh, the typhoon season rather. And we will be all uh, ways hampered by the difficulties on weather at that time. We'll be, of course, focusing on the rescue and relief operations, as well as the budget, which will be tackled during that time. So I think the, the, in practical terms, Mr. Chairman, if uh, the House of Representatives, and I'm just being uh, presumptuous at this time because we don't know what the discussions will be uh, this afternoon or tomorrow, but if they do pass a five month period, and I will not, and I will not dwell on the word provisional, provisional because uh, we can call it whatever we want. And as mentioned by our distinguished luminaries, as long as it complies with three requisites, of the constitution, which is, it has to be Filipino owned, 60% of it, Filipino owned and organized. Number two, it cannot be exclusive. It shall not be exclusive. And the period is no longer than 50 years. As long as we don't um, uh, uh, go against these requisites of the constitution in article 12, section 11, uh, and we can come up with a shorter law. Case in point, the Bayanian law that we passed recently only has a three month uh, uh, lifespan. But on my personal opinion, Mr. President, uh, Mr. Chairman, rather, we should at least grant them a bit longer uh, than the five months being required uh, and requested so that they have time to uh, ventilate issues with the House of Representatives. At the same time, continue their operations, Mr. Chairman. That is my humble opinion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Senator Zubiri. And uh, that's why... Um, uh, this measure is really uh, quite urgent uh, because of the um, limited time, session time that we have here in the Senate, as well as the urgency to um, uh, allow ABS, CBN to broadcast and participate in the fight against COVID by giving information uh, to our constituents. Uh, yan po para sa akin ang pinaka mabisa sa ngayon na malaman po ng taong bayan kung ano yung gagawin nila at anong iiwasan nila. 
uh, admittedly there are some areas in fact i read uh, some reports areas like uh, the mountain mountainous areas of Quezon, some areas in aurora EVSCBN is the only network or dzmm is the only network that can reach that far because of their technology and uh, itong bagyong ambo lang ha, uh, dahil hindi ho sila nakakuha ng balita uh, hindi ho sila nakapaghanda ng mas mabilis so there's really a sense of urgency in uh, tackling this measure and uh, i was conferring with center laksan earlier the process being employed here is um, to give ABS-CBN a provisional franchise or a shorter term franchise, but the original 25 year franchise will still be discussed and the uh, substantive issues there will still be debated and will still be uh, discussed at the committee uh, in the House of uh, Representatives. So, para pong uh, mangyayari, uh, para lang maka-operate na ho ang ABS uh, as soon as possible, bibigyan muna ng maiksing uh, prangkisa pero itutuloy pa rin po yung pagrinig ng uh, uh, original na prangkisa. And um, with that, I'd uh, like to ask our members if they have any more uh, questions to uh, propound. To uh, Senator uh, Bato. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, may I ask the, this question to Senator uh, Enrile, sir? Uh, granting that uh, uh, this provisional franchise of uh, five months be made into law, then uh, subsequently, the 25-year franchise will also be made into law. Ang gagawin ba natin is ibabawas itong five months from the 25 years na ibibigay sa kanila? Yun lang, sir, yun. Kung baba, ibabawas ba ito? Kung ma-approve itong 5 months, ibabawas ba ito sa 25 years na ibibigay sa kanila subsequently? Magiging mahigit na ng 25 years. Or kan, pag dinagdagan mo pa, hindi pwedeng uh, kan, eh, 50 years lang. Hindi, ang, ang problema dito ni ako, hindi ko alam kung yung 50 years na yun is uh, the end of any grantee's uh, right to engage in the business. Pero palagay ko naman, hindi. Uh, 50 years plus 50 years plus 50 years at infinito. <laughs> eh, eh, hindi ko alam. On, only the Supreme Court can answer that question. But what I'm saying is, baka magiging parang joke na itong nangyayari sa ating saligang batas. Kung... Uh, ginagawa ninyo yung kongreso na parang administrative agency with quasi-legislative function or quasi-judicial function. Kaya sinasabi ko, mas mabuti siguro yung, yung, yung amend the uh, law creating the NTC and delegate the power to grant a provisional permit or uh, whatever uh, it is to the expiring uh, franchises so that Congress can perform its function to grant the normal periods for the franchises so that hindi magkakagulo na ganito. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Mr. Uh, Chairman. To the related to what uh, Senator De La Rosa asked and um, it has come to my attention that uh, uh, indeed uh, the frequencies being held by uh, networks, rainbow, uh, uh, rain, rain um, there is a certain limit. With, uh, are, are we aware of uh, the, uh, is that a provision of law that uh, you're supposed to surrender the same frequency after 50 years? of continuous use is um, our resource person aware of this that question is uh, addressed to mr katigba Mr. 
Mr. Karigbak, can you uh, reply to the query? Frequency after a certain number of years of use. Is that correct, Mr. Chair? Mr. Katigbak, it repeated from the start. Hindi ho namin kayo marinig. Pakiulat. Yeah. I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. The line, the line is not so clear. Uh, uh, I think galing dyan sa, sa floor. Problema ng ano, ng audio. Yeah. A uh, test, 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 test. Mr. Chair, can you hear now? Hi, your honor. Mr. Chairman, uh, dyan sa floor, yung, uh, hindi marinig yung pagpalaboy yung marinig. Audio nyo dyan sa, sa floor, sa floor. There is some kind of uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, let me recognize Mr. first and then go back to uh, Mr. Ketipak. Uh, Mr. Chair, can we be heard now? Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, we were un we couldn't hear the question of, um, of the Senate President. So, is it okay if we request uh, the Senate President to repeat his question, please, Mr. Chair? All right. Uh, I, I don't know how uh, you've held the frequencies, no. And I understand that there is a certain limit to the num number of years a frequency should be held by any network. Uh, or radio station, if that is correct, and that is true, um, is it correct to say that uh, you are supposed to surrender the same frequency after 50 years of continuous use? Is that uh, a rule of the NTC or a law? Uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, we are not aware of any such rule in the NTC or any such law in existence. Thank you, Senator Dillon. It's recognized. Senator Frank? Yes. Uh, just uh, two points. In response to the query of my colleague, uh, Senator De La Rosa, uh, assuming that the uh, agreed to a, that the franchise is, a uh, new franchise is only for five months. When we talk, when, when we come again in October, presumably to act again on, the, on, on a regular 25 year franchise, uh, the five months can be added uh, to, the, to the 25 years, it can be deducted. That is all uh, up to us uh, because our powers are plenary and we're only limited by the 50 year uh, limitation on the constitution. We can do anything include whether or not we include or exclude the five months that we are now considering. Second point, uh, with all due respect, I uh, uh, cannot uh, concur with the view of, uh, uh, of former Senate President, Senator Greeley, to delegate the power to issue franchises to the National Telecommunications Commission. Uh, <clears throat> we, we are aware that uh, in our statute books, are examples of when Congress, of Congress delegating the power to issue franchises to administrative bodies. That is a matter of policy on the part of Congress. And insofar as this is concerned, uh, we take the position that, uh, the, uh, that, the, that it is uh, not uh, consistent with public policy to delegate this uh, power to an administrative agency. It uh, involves a constitutional uh, exercise of a constitutional uh, right, uh, the freedom of speech. I would feel very uncomfortable to delegate this to 
to the NTC, especially given our recent experience with the way NTC reneged on its promises to Congress to issue a provisional authority consistent with the practice in the past. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, uh, Senator Drillon. Senator Pacquiao. Mr. Chairman, may I react to... Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, um, Mr. Chairman the uh, five months uh, uh, provisional authority to air um, given to ABS-CBN I think it's it's not enough because I don't get the lo I don't get the logic uh, giving a provisional uh, uh, franchise to EBSCBN within five months um, while the uh, application is pending to uh, um, lawyer house in Congress. So hindi ko makita yung yung logic don unless. Uh, matapos yung uh, deliberation ng uh, renewal ng uh, franchise within uh, five months until October, then it's reasonable to give them uh, a uh, provisional uh, uh, authority to air and within five months. Sa akin lang, magiging dubli yung trabaho natin. Magiging dubli yung trabaho natin if the uh, process in lower house for a renewal is not yet done until October 31. Hindi matatapos. So, mag-renew ulit tayo, mag-approve ulit tayo ng uh, provisional uh, authority to air dahil hindi pa natapos yung... Uh, so, magiging dubli yung trabaho natin na uh, unless na kung pwede naman natin bigyan sila hanggang sa matapos itong Congress na ito, itong the whole eight Congress, Hanggang matapos yung delivery, or oh, unless, unless the Congress will turn down the renewal of the franchise. And that's the time we are going to, to tell the ABS, oh, close na kayo, kaya hindi na kayo pwede mag-air. So, pero hanggat dinideliberate sa, sa lower house, dinig yung uh, uh, renewal ng, uh, ng franchise, then... Bakit natin limitahan yung ano? Tayo rin mag mag tayo rin nagpapadoble, nagpapahirap sa trabaho natin eh. Magpapahirap sa trabaho natin na eh, what if hindi matapos ng October na hindi pa natapos yung deliberation sa sa lower house, then magre-renew ulit tayo, mag another another work na naman. So for me, I think uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, uh, my 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 uh, opinion is five months is not enough uh, to, unless 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 uh, we will finish it until October 31, the Congress will finish it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Pacquiao. And 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 uh, I'd like to have one last question with uh, CJ Puno. Uh, so CJ, in 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 other words, just to reiterate, a five-month franchise is not unconstitutional, and it can be done through plenary. Yes, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, uh, the uh, length of uh, the uh, provisional uh, franchise is uh, left to the uh, discretion of uh, Congress. So that's perfectly uh, allowed by uh, the uh, Constitution. And uh, the exercise of uh, that uh, power Tells on uh, the uh, wisdom of uh, Congress, and uh, we know the uh, jurisprudence that uh, the exercise of uh, wisdom by uh, Congress uh, cannot uh, be a uh, question. It's a uh, political uh, question. Should but, uh, we e yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. So should we even call it a provisional franchise or just plain franchise in the body of the law? Yeah, precisely, uh, Mr. Chairman, if uh, you will allow me to uh, make uh, quick uh, comments on uh, the, uh, the form, the substance of uh, Senate Bill number uh, 1521. Uh, well, I take it that uh, this is uh, provisional uh, in uh, character. And... Uh, as uh, Senator uh, Lacson uh, said, this uh, does not uh, settle the uh, constitutional uh, issues. 
that uh, may be raised when uh, Congress tackles the uh, the task of uh, of uh, uh, deciding whether uh, to renew or uh, not uh, to renew the uh, franchise of uh, ABS uh, CBN. In other words, this is just uh, an interim measure, a uh, provisional uh, authority whose uh, purpose, whose objective is uh, to preserve the status quo. Now, presenting uh, from that uh, premise, uh, I'm uh, reading the uh, this, uh, Senate Bill number uh, 1521. Uh, I, I uh, find it uh, quite uh, strange, uh, Mr. Chairman, that uh, this bill purports to amend Section 1 of uh, Republic Act uh, number uh, 7966. This is uh, quite uh, strange to me because uh, we are uh, amending a uh, section of uh, seven, Republic Act 7966, which is already a dead law. 7966 is passé. It's no longer uh, in existence. So uh, I, I feel it uh, quite uh, inappropriate to uh, amend uh, a, a provision of a dead law. Perhaps uh, the, uh, this, uh, this uh, Senate bill should, should uh, stand as a, uh, as, a, uh, as a bill, as a law in itself. And uh, I note that uh, the title of uh, the bill does not uh, state that uh, it's amending uh, Section 1 of uh, Republic Act uh, 7966. Perhaps uh, that should be uh, uh, expressed in the title if uh, that is uh, really the uh, decision of uh, the Senate. And then uh, number two, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, as uh, worded, the uh, provisional uh, franchise uh, given is uh, to construct To me, uh, this uh, does not uh, merely uh, preserve uh, the status quo. Perhaps uh, it should be uh, quite clear in uh, the bill that this is just a provisional order to maintain uh, the status quo, to maintain the uh, frequency given uh, to uh, ABS uh, CBN. But uh, to include in this uh, provisional uh, authority, the power to construct is uh, to be uh, uh, not uh, in accord with uh, the uh, purpose uh, just to maintain the uh, status quo. And then uh, there is a uh, section here, separa separability clause. There is no need for uh, a separability clause. There is just uh, essentially one provision in a Senate uh, bill number 1521. So maybe we can uh, take away this uh, uh, separability uh, clause. Uh, that is uh, all, uh, Mr. Sef. Oh, uh, before I, uh, I, uh, I uh, let me give uh, some uh, quick uh, response to the uh, observations of uh, the Senate, former uh, Senate uh, President and really, and uh, the reaction of uh, uh, Senator Drillon. Uh, uh, there is the uh, proposal that uh, Congress uh, should just, uh, you know, uh, give the uh, power to uh, issue this uh, provisional uh, authority to the uh, National uh, Telecommunication uh, Commission. Well, I see some uh, legal uh, difficulty there. The, uh, the provisional uh, authority is a uh, part of uh, the uh, lawmaking uh, power of uh, Congress. And uh, we know 
and uh, the power to uh, make laws cannot be uh, delegated to uh, any uh, other uh, uh, body or uh, an agency like uh, the uh, NTC that uh, belongs to the uh, executive uh, department. And then uh, number two, uh, it's not uh, entirely uh, correct to uh, to say that uh, it's simply uh, uh, exercising uh, legislative uh, powers. You look at the uh, architecture of our uh, constitution. Yes, Congress uh, essentially uh, has that uh, power to enact uh, laws. That is the uh, principal uh, power of uh, Congress. But uh, look at the Constitution. Congress is also given the power to exercise non-legislative uh, powers. For instance, when it uh, conducts uh, an investigation, in aid of uh, legislation, the conduct of, uh, of, uh, of uh, an investigation is not uh, strictly uh, legislated. When Congress uh, 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 subpoenas a uh, witness, he does not appear and he's uh, a judge in a contempt of half court, that is an exercise of uh, quasi uh, judicial uh, power. In the same way, you look at the uh, architecture of power of the judicial the, the power to interpret laws is the main power of uh, the supreme court but the supreme court is also granted the exercise of non-judicial powers for instance the power to supervise the IBP and uh, others those are powers that are non-judicial in character so it is you look at uh, the powers of the uh, executive department the, pre the president uh, is given the main power to execute the laws. But uh, again, the uh, executive is uh, also granted the exercise of non-executive uh, power. That is the architecture of, uh, of power in the Constitution. And uh, let, uh, I, I uh, submit that uh, uh, this should be uh, taken uh, consideration of. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, will you allow me to react to Justice Puno and uh, Senator Diron? Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Gentlemen, I believe uh, this is Senator Zubiri. I believe that the- uh, Mr. Chairman. The session hall can't read us clearly. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. I think we lost it. Mr. Chairman. Naka-off yung audio ni Nang Nang Floor. Naka-off yung audio nila. Mr. Chairman, I would like to react to the statement of Justice Puno and Senator Dillon bearing on my statement to delegate the power to maintain the status quo to NTC. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Senator Enrile. Now, I did not suggest, and I know that I cannot suggest that, legislative power must be delegated to the NTC. What I was saying is to delegate the power to extend the operation of ABS and C CBN in order to maintain the status quo and so that Congress will have the time to deliberate on the pending bill to extend the franchise or not to extend the franchise. They have misunderstood my suggestion, please, do not put something in my mind that is not there. I am not delegating legislative power. I'm just 
telling you that commend the powers of NPC so that in a situation like what we have, which is a situation of first impression, they can extend the status quo in order to protect the interest of the orga business organization and its employees until Congress can finally make a decision. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Mr. President. Uh, well taken, and uh, we'll take note of that, sir. Senator Recto, and then uh, uh, Mr. Aquino. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to put on record some of my observations. Uh, first, nothing prevents the Senate from extending the franchise beyond five months or even to adopt the 25-year normal uh, length of a fran franchise. No? In this situation, we understand uh, the reason why it is in October, as far as the House is concerned, no? but assuming they pass that at October. But nothing prevents us in the Senate uh, passing a regular franchise similar to what we've given to other TV stations or broadcasters, meaning to say it is 25 years. Then in the BICAM, there is still a process to follow. For all we know, we would be able to convince our colleagues in the House to once and for all address the issue and extend the franchise by 25 years. Now, it is also possible for political reasons that they convince us na hanggang October lang muna. Okay? So having said that, Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to put that on record that these are part of our options to once and hopefully once and for all settle this issue. No? Because even if we extend it for one more year, we will come back to this issue after a year. So maybe that is part of our option to pass a franchise 25 years, take it to the BICAM, uh, then find out from our colleagues whether they are amenable or not. So it's just that, uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Director. Father Aquino is recognized. Father. Father. Father, naka mute po kayo. My control, Glenn. Yeah, okay now. Senator, in the first place, may I just make clear that all of this trouble we are having is because the control is apparently with the Senate floor. I cannot control my own mic here. Uh, number two, the other thing I'd like to say, Senator, is whether it is a provisional franchise or not, it will still take the form of legislation. And so even if it is for five months or six months or half a year or a full year, it will have to take the form of legislation. Uh, I can see, at first I myself asked that question, why not yet a full franchise? But if there are outstanding issues that must yet be resolved and questions that the Congress or one of its chambers might like to be clarified about before it passes the final franchise, I can see the usefulness of granting a franchise that lasts for only, uh, what, five months or six months or half a year. I also wish to register my concurrence with Chief Justice Puno that uh, there is no point in amending the original charter of ABS-CBN. What, what will happen is that Congress must pass a new, a new law uh, which embodies the so-called provisional franchise. And with that manifestation, Your Honor, I respectfully ask to be excused now uh, as I must attend to some other thing, thanking the Senate for having given me this privilege to address you all. Thank you, Father. Thank you very much for your participation and your uh, comments. Senator, uh, uh, Senator President? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, again, thank you to uh, Father Aquino. Uh, just a short rewind to the um, uh, original question on the issue of frequency. would like to ask uh, ABS, uh, CBN, okay. perhaps Carlo or, or Attorney Mayo may be able to answer. Uh, it has come to my attention also that the NTC, in their uh, cease and desist order given to 
they had a clause uh, asking you for a, a show cause order on why the frequency should not be recalled. I think you were given 10 days. Have you answered the, uh, their, uh, their order already? Uh, Mr. Chair, may I request that Attorney Bautista be recognized? Yes, Attorney Bautista, you're recognized. Thank you, Your Honors. The cease and desist order directed us in the dispositive portion, and I quote, avs -CBN Corporation is also hereby directed to show cause in writing within 10 days from receipt of this order why the above-mentioned frequencies assigned to it should not be recalled for lack of the necessary congressional franchise as required by law. Our 10th day ended last Friday and we did file our show cause answer and compliance. Your honors, please. Ah, okay, you did. Yes, right. sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. If, if I may add, your honors, please. Yes, go ahead, attorney. Senate President Enrile earlier asked the question, what is the urgency, considering that there are a lot of radio stations available? May I please point out, Your Honors, that the cease and desist order includes both radio and television stations of ABS-CBN. It is not limited to Channel 2. In fact, there are five AM stations and 18 FM stations, which are located all over the country, some in extremely remote areas. Moreover, there are 42 TV stations covered, not just Channel 2. Again, these 42 stations are located in Luzon, Visayas, in Mindanao, some of them in remote mountainous areas and coastal areas. Finally, the order, the CDO, likewise covers 10 digital terrestrial television stations located as well in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. So may I just correct the misimpression that the CDO merely covers TV stations, principally Channel 2. It does not. It covers the frequencies which are listed in the CDO order. And that highlights the urgency of our getting the franchise or getting back on the air for the reasons mentioned by Mr. Katikpa. Thank you, Your Honors. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney. Any more questions from the body? Uh, uh, Senator Agara. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I just want to confirm, maybe with our more experienced uh, colleagues in the Senate, uh, if it was really the practice to allow the, it seems, because I was furnished information that uh, even in cases where franchises had lapsed, uh, there were franchises, namely the CBCP franchise, Subic Broadcasting, uh, Philippine Telegraph and Telephone Corporation, and Globe Innova is Lacom, where they were allowed to operate up to the end of the congressional term or uh, up to the point where the franchises were granted legislatively. So uh, if that is the logic, if that is the, the existing practice and tradition, then it would make sense to allow ABS-CBN to operate till the end of the 18th Congress. So I want to solicit the uh, opinion of our uh, more experienced colleagues who have uh, who perhaps have dealt with these questions in the past. Senator Ngar, um, um, unfortunately, uh, NTC uh, did not participate in today's hearing for uh, the reason of sub and uh, because they are in the midst of uh, 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 hearing a case in the Supreme Court, they uh, excused themselves from attending. Uh, that question, can be better answered by uh, the NTC. Um, Senator Dillon? <clears throat> yes, uh, in response to Senator Angara, our uh, records in the Senate will show that in those instances cited by Senator Angara, while, we, while the debate was ongoing on the uh, 
grant of these franchises, uh, the NTC did not issue a cease and desist order. And therefore, with that non-issuance of the cease and with, with no action from the, uh, from the uh, NTC, in effect, it was a, uh, taken as a, uh, an, uh, an agreement by the NTC uh, or an order from the NTC that they can continue to broadcast. Um, and uh, in, our, in our recent uh, debates, uh, Senator Angara, uh, Senator Po, uh, as chair of the Committee on Public Services, cited that precedent, at least in Congress, that that is the practice. Uh, again, uh, the, NT, the practice is the NTC did not allow or did not issue any cease and desist order. That is why among the points raised against the uh, cease and desist order issued by the NTC is uh, the unequal protection of the law, uh, an even application of the law, because they did not issue a similar cease and desist order in at least five instances when the franchise franchises of these uh, different uh, telecommunication companies uh, were pending while uh, or the expired while the uh, renewal was pending and being debated in the Senate. And uh, the practice and was that uh, it should uh, be uh, remain in effect until the end of uh, the term of the Congress. Uh, in fact, Mr. President, we have filed a bill which will, in effect, put into law this practice uh, by amending the administrative code and allowing the telecommunication companies and the franchise holder in general to continue operating while their application for renewal is being debated in, the, in Congress. Because it is not the fault of the franchise holder that Congress did not act on the application. So uh, that's, the, that's the substance of the bill that uh, we, have, uh, we, we have filed uh, so that uh, we will not, we will address, we can adequately address this issue should it again arise in the future. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Mr. Chair. Chair. Mr. Mr. Chair, Chair, may I respond to the question, to the response? Uh, Senator Lakson and then Senator Angara. In, in short, Mr. Chairman, what uh, the way I understood uh, Senator Drillon is that it is not up to Congress to extend uh, the franchise that has already expired, but it is up to the executive branch, the NTC in this, uh, in this uh, particular issue, uh, because they are the implementer or the enforcer of the uh, laws that we have passed. So, yung president na sinayit ni Senator Angara, wala po sa kamay ng Congress yun. It's due to the non-action, I suppose, non-action of the NTC to uh, confiscate or to uh, not to issue the frequency, sir, uh, or to continue issuing the frequency, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chairman. Senator Angara. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I cited those precedents precisely because the NTC in the past seemed to respect the power of Congress to grant the franchise. And while Congress was debating whether to extend the franchises, it did not step in. And this seems to be the exception to the rule. That's why, and this was confirmed by uh, Senator Frank Drillon, and I thank him for his answer. Um, and to, on to another point, uh, Mr. Chair, is I remember at the February 24 or 25 hearing uh, when it was still Senator Poe chairing the Public Services Committee before relinquishing to Senator Wynn. Uh, and a Secretary of Justice Guevara came to us and said there is a, a gap in the law, uh, precisely where we are right now. It's when a franchise expires and uh, while Congress is renewing its uh, franchise, there is a gap in the law and perhaps I would uh, encourage the committee to tackle the bill of Senator Drillon because Ms. Uh, na yung Secretary of Justice nang sabi may kakulangan po sa batas. And siguro to avoid situations like this where so many livelihoods and jobs are affected, uh, especially in a period like this, we could not have a repeat of this situation, uh, Mr. Chair. That's all. Thank you. 
Thank you, Senator Angara. And I, I did uh, my own research over the weekend. And in fact, uh, those uh, TV stations and radio stations that, uh, uh, that did not have a franchise or the franchise expired, but uh, they were waiting for their franchise to be renewed by Congress, uh, they were never issued a provisional authority. In fact, that provisional authority is non-existent. What happened is NTC just let them operate dahil wala hong nagre-reklamo. So in other words, nagpikit mata na lang. But in this case, because of the uh, uh, complaints of the uh, OSG, um, I think uh, NTC deemed it necessary to uh, issue that uh, cease and desist order. So that is the difference, uh, Senator Ibarra. Mr. Chair? Senator Bato is recognized. Mr. Chair. Uh, and then Senator Nancy. Uh, Senator Bato is raising his hands earlier, and then Senator Nancy, and then Senator Pico. Thank you. Senator Bato? Senator Bato? Is he there? Oh. Senator Nancy? Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, since the bang na pag-usapan ng NTC ngayon, um, Mr. Ayan, mamimim na naman si uh, Senator Nancy. Uh, 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 Na-company. Garbled ka? And then, we cannot hear you. Senator Nancy. Uh, garbled ka? Okay. We cannot hear you, Senator Nancy. Hindi lang Mr. Chair. Senator Nancy, Senator Kiko, uh, you recognize? Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, may I just be clarified as to the earlier manifestation of the uh, chair that uh, the NTC did not appear uh, in today's hearing and they are invoking uh, uh, sub judice as basis for the, the, the <laughs> Yes, Senator Kiko. I did that. Letter. Oh. Uh, precisely uh, invoking that uh, rule, Mr. Uh, Kiko. Yes, Mr. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, I believe uh, invoking such a or using such uh, a reason that there is a pending case to evade or avoid a congressional hearing, uh, I think, is uh, 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 unacceptable, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Otherwise. Uh, Given all the cases that are pending before various uh, courts against government agencies or its employees, uh, they will all invoke uh, sub judice in order to avoid the attending uh, Senate hearings. And I believe uh, legislative uh, precedents uh, will uh, bear us out that uh, such an invocation uh, has not been uh, recognized or uh, uh, has not been given weight uh, by the Senate in previous hearings, in previous Congresses. For the record, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator Kiko, I understand from the other members that the actual hearing, the hearing itself, is uh, today. And uh, they are uh, mandated to appear on those hearings. Uh, but nevertheless, we will uh, take note of your uh, manifestation and uh, we will monitor closely uh the proceedings in uh, the supreme court and uh, uh during the next hearing if warrant uh, we will uh, we will uh, mandate them to appear in the uh, next hearing yes thank you thank you um, and, and this should be you know the, the message as well to all other government agencies or or entities that uh, will be called before the senate in future hearings uh, uh we will not uh, acknowledge or we will not recognize 
that as a valid ground to refuse uh, attending hearings uh, in, the, in the Senate, uh, that there is a pending case. Uh, we have not done that before, and uh, we will not be stymied uh, by such uh, invocations in the, now and in the future. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Senator Kiko. Uh, Mr. Senator Chair? Uh, Nancy, pakiulit po. Nancy, okay na. Uh, magmaska raw, sabi ni Senator Ping. Magmaska ko pa. <laughs> Mr. Chair? Biro lang yun. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just for submission sa NTC, um, ng listing kung aside from ABS-CBN, meron pa pa silang inisyahan ng CIS and desist order. Yan lang po, Mr. Chair. Uh, they are not here, but we will uh, uh, send them a letter uh, upon your uh, 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 send them a letter containing your request uh, para po may submit po sa committee before the next hearing. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator Miggs uh, will we'll recognize Senator Risa first and then Senator Zbiri. Okay, yes. Go ahead, please. Go ahead, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, salamat din, uh, Majority Leader. Uh, sorry, uh, video? Uh -oh. Okay, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, salamat kayo po with uh, Majority Leader. So I'll go straight, uh, Mr. Chairman, dun sa finlag ko kaninang mga tanong uh, towards a pro-worker franchise for ABS-CBN. Uh, we recently received a letter from the National Alliance of Broadcast Unions, or NABU, signed by its president, Generoso Villanueva Jr., requesting that pro-worker provisions be included uh, in any legislative franchise granted to uh, ABS-CBN. Uh, NABU, uh, Mr. Chairman, represents workers in media outlets across the country, including the ABS-CBN rank and file employees uh, union. Uh, ABS-CBN has cited the welfare of its employees countless times in its fight for the granting of its franchise. And uh, may, may note of urgency pa rin because uh, uh, earlier or uh, reportedly, no, Mr. Carlo Katigbak mentioned that they're considering uh, retrenchment after three months if they are unable to return to broadcasting. So itong pressures talaga, Mr. Chairman, both on labor uh, and on business no, under uh, these kinds of circumstances. So uh, yung, uh, yung unang tanong ko, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, paano masisigurado ng ABS-CBN na mas mapapangalagaan nito ang kanyang mga empleyado? Now, given that we're... Uh, Three months is a, a, a time horizon na medyo kailangan na nating uh, tignan no? if we don't resolve this question of the franchise. So that's my first question, uh, Mr. Chairman. Is that directed to ABS? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. Addressed to ABS. Paano nila pinoforsi mapang, mapangalagaan yung kanilang uh, mga empleyado? Given the current situation and given that... Uh, three-month time horizon that uh, they've been probably forced to see and that they have communicated to the public, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Katigbak, you're uh, recognized. Please answer the question. I think at this point in time, we feel that we've, we're already giving them um, pay and benefits that are above what the government has mandated and are above what the industries are at or above what the industry is paying. Right now, uh, we're facing two very painful uh, dilemmas. The first one is that the business has suffered significantly when COVID-19 hit. And the second one is that uh, we're now off the air. And so uh, we're hardly generating any revenues. Uh, we commit that we will continue doing whatever we can to take care of our employees. Uh, to continuously better their compensation as the business improves. It's just very difficult for us to have that discussion today, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. I hope you understand, given the fact that we're facing two very significant uh, business challenges. And as soon as maybe we can get back on air, and as soon as the business normalizes, then I think uh, it might be easier for us to have those discussions at that point in time, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. 
Fair enough, Mr. Chairman. And I just like to make it a record also that uh, I've heard from uh, mga kababayan, both from within uh, ABS-CBN and also uh, yung mga regular na taga panood at taga pakinig nila. Um, because I, I failed to mention earlier that in fact, speaking of radio, even DZMM has been forced to shut down. Now, I've heard that uh, there's uh, not enough recognition or appreciation for the fact that uh, as uh, Mr. Katigbak has mentioned again, uh, the management has continued to sustain uh, their regular employees. Um, and they're, they're, uh, it's fair to, to appreciate that. But we're in this situation uh, right now, and uh, I've made no secret of the fact that I look forward to voting for uh, the renewal of the franchise once it is the proper time for the Senate uh, to vote on that. Uh, so I need to ask additionally questions related to the possibilities of a uh, uh, pro-worker franchise. Na hindi rin naman bago na sa mga resource persons natin sa abs cbn because I also raised this in the previous hearing of the Senate Committee on uh, Public Services. So uh, questions and possible amendments at the proper time related to concerns like paano masisigurado ng abs cbn na mas mapapakalagaan pa nito ang kanilang mga empleyado, paano itutuwid ng management ang mga ulat, uh, gaya ng beneficyong eksklusibo lang daw sa ilang regular na empleyado, uh, tungkol sa mga talent na arawan, kung, baya, kung bayaran, kaya lantad sa extended working hours, and mga talent na ilang taon na sa serbisyo, pero nananatiling program-based ang Estado. So in relation, Mr. Chairman, to these and um, uh, similar uh, concerns. Uh, I'm thinking ahead since this is, as the chairman said at the beginning of the hearing, anticipatory, clarificatory uh, uh, hearing. Uh, would the sponsor be amenable at the proper time uh, to a new provision inserted perhaps prior to Section 11? And I'm referring, uh, Mr. Chair, to uh, Senate Bill Number 1521. The new provision inserted prior to Section 11, guaranteeing the rights of ABS-CBN's employees to self-organization, regularization, expression, a living wage, and other such benefits, Mr. Chairman. Just for purposes of uh, discussing the possible, uh, uh, anticipating the best case scenario that indeed uh, ABS-CBN's uh, franchise will be renewed. So. What would be the possibility, Mr. Chairman, of such a new provision, Mr. Chairman? Uh, uh, Senator Risi, we will uh, take note of your proposal. And uh, uh, as what the Senate President discussed earlier, that the uh, form of the House version is still being debated upon yes, in the lower house. So we will uh, uh, wait for that uh, final bill and we will. Uh, uh, try to consider your uh, proposal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If the Chairman will just allow, I'll put a second and last question of that nature on the record para nga po mapag-usapan natin ulit uh, at the proper time once matanggap na po natin yung uh, House version. And this second and last question, Mr. Chairman, is uh, mari rin po ba natin sila, meaning ABS-CBN, anticipating the renewal of their franchise, mari rin po ba natin silang i-require na magkaroon ng kahit isang independent union-appointed director na uupo sa kanilang board of directors uh, at o uupo sa kanilang uh, manpom. And uh, lastly for uh, this uh, after this noon, Mr. Chairman, would the chairman allow me please to address a related question to former Chief Justice Puno uh, about uh, these questions of mine on a uh, uh, pro worker uh, franchise for ABS CBN. Mari Puba, Mr. Chairman. Um, we will uh, uh, direct uh, Mr. Katigbak to take note of that. Uh, he doesn't need yes, to answer that for now. Uh, again, we will uh, have to wait for the final form of the House version to be able to uh, uh, see if we can uh, insert such a suggestion. But, uh, I understand, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah, for the record, lang muna today. Opo. Pero may I ask uh, one final question to CJ Puno in relation to these questions? Yes, go ahead. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
uh, Chief Justice Puno, maganda, magandang tanghali po sa inyo. Yung tanong ko po sa inyo, uh, is there any precedent uh, or for that matter, is there any restriction on uh, requiring that a franchise observe certain labor standards or in fact allow workers' representatives uh, in management boards or management committees like a mancom or you know, a management committee. Meron po bang um, uh, president uh, o meron po bang restriction kaugnay sa ganitong uh, mga provisions? Thank you uh, for uh, the question. Let us just uh, uh, proceed from uh, the premise that uh, a franchise is a mere uh, privilege. There is no uh, absolute uh, right on the part of any person, on the part of any uh, institution to the grant of a uh, franchise. And so, uh, proceeding from uh, that uh, predicate, Congress uh, has all uh, the powers to impose uh, conditions or uh, conditionalities. Uh, in uh, the law granting uh, a franchise or uh, a provisional uh, order of authority. As long as the conditions uh, do not uh, violate uh, the uh, Constitution, and I do not see how these uh, pro-labor uh, uh, provisions uh, will violate uh, the Constitution. In fact, uh, you look at our Constitution, the spirit of our Constitution is uh, pro-labor. In other words, uh, I, I do not see any uh, constitutional impediment if uh, you uh, require these uh, conditions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Chief Justice Puno. Uh, at salamat, Mr. Chair. So lastly, in relation to those questions and the uh, advice of Chief Justice Puno, again, anticipating the future hearings uh, here in the Senate, once matagap na po natin yung House version, uh, I think if at the proper time uh, matanggap man itong mga proposed amendments ko, then compliance with these provisions could then be made part of the network's annual report to Congress. At uh, gaya ng iba pang mga issue legal uh, laban sa ABS-CBN na uh, nilinaw nila nung nakaraang hearing ng Senate Committee on Public Services, halimbawa uh, yung mga issue na ni Ray sa kuwaran to petition ng uh, Office of the Solicitor General, ay napapanawan na rin naman na tuwid sa guti ng network yung mga labor issues na ipinupukol sa kanila. At sa usapin ng franchise, after all, kasama nilang nakikipaglaban. Uh, hindi lang tayo mga manunood, kasama nilang nakikipaglaban ang kanilang mga empleyado simula hanggang dulo. So in return, you know, it, uh, it's equitable to, to ask ABS-CBN to further advance the rights of its workers and further put their well-being first. Uh, and lastly, pala, Mr. Chair, uh, again, just for the record, I will ask this question at the proper time when we consider possible amendments similar to the franchises granted in channels 7 and 5. Uh, I will ask at the proper time if the good sponsor would be amenable to inserting a dispersal of ownership provision requiring the network to provide a portion of the company's stock to its employees as part of their compensation. And if so, uh, this could count against the 30% of the company's stock that has to be offered. Finally, Mr. Chair, I really believe that if a substantial part of the network is owned by its own workers and employees, this will help shield the company from political intrigue and chicanery uh, under a renewed franchise. So maraming salamat, uh, Mr. Chair, at uh, sa lahat po na ating mga resource persons. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, um, of course, we um, can uh, always uh, consider the proposal of uh, our colleague, uh, Senator Rivera's. But maybe, may I call your attention to the Constitution, Section 11. On the uh, national patrimony, there are conditions set by the constitution on franchises. Uh, it's only limited to three. 
institution and for the leaders. Franchise is not exclusive in character. Franchise is granted under the conditions that is subject to amendment, alteration, and repeal by Congress when the common good is notified. So, um, uh, with that in mind, uh, perhaps uh, the committee can look into the, the uh, suggestion. But then again, um, very clear in the Constitution, we alter a franchise as we have done before. Then we have to alter all the other franchises once it comes to us. That was what the practice that we have done in the past Congresses. So, pag naglagay tayo ng bagong provision sa isang franchise, ng isang network or radio station or <clears throat> whatever, all the other franchises must have it, must have the same. Uh, all right? So, with, with that, as a reminder uh, for the committee, perhaps, uh, um, may, may I just go to a <clears throat> one more point to the uh, uh, question on uh, the uh, ABS? Um, <clears throat> there are some observers that have been uh, asking us that uh, we should ask you the the number of uh, employees that you have. I understand in the last hearing already you were able to submit um, the number of uh, employees. You had uh, re regular employees, uh, I think about 5,000. Is that correct, uh, um, uh, Carlo? Uh, y yes, uh, Mr. President, we have uh, 5,000 employees under ABS-CBN Corporation and 11,000 employees under the ABS group of companies, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. Mm, all right, and then, <clears throat> and then, um, the radio station, or DCMM, is operating on Sky Cable, right? Uh, DCMM Teleradio is operating on, uh, being distributed by Sky Cable, yes, Your Honor. Yes. Yes, uh, I, of course, I know, I, I've been watching. <laughs> um, <clears throat> how long is the uh, franchise of Sky Cable? Uh, Your Honor, Sky Cable has two kinds of franchises. They have the local franchise and they have a congressional franchise. I understand their congressional franchise has already uh, expired, but I understand that uh, many other cable companies are able to operate even without requiring a congressional franchise, uh, Your Honor. If local franchises? Uh, yes, and uh, and provisional authorities. From... So you have not filed for a renewal of uh, the Sky Cable? Uh, we have also filed, Your Honor. 1995 was the, the, the date it was granted, right? Yeah. Uh, yes, Your Honor. We have filed for the renewal as well for Sky Cable. Uh, it's also pending in Congress? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Chair. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Senator President. Any more? Uh, Senator Zubiri? Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, just for the record, um, there were several uh, substantial matters taken up by the previous hearing of uh, Senator uh, Grace Poe, which he chaired uh, the Committee on Public Services in February 24, the issue of the ABS-CBN franchise. With the permission of the body, Mr. Chairman, I move that the proceedings of that hearing be made part of the records of this uh, particular hearing as well, Mr. Chairman. And then I have another question after you act on the motion. Any uh, objection from the body? Hearing none, the motion of Senator Zubiri is carried. Go ahead, Thank Senator you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, also, uh, just to uh, also reiterate the point of Senator Panginan, uh, I find it a bit irregular that the NBC did not attend today's hearing. Um, they may invoke uh, the right not to answer on subjudicial issues when the issues per se entails the case filed <clears throat> with the Supreme Court. However, Mr. Chair, uh, we still have to ask the regulator if they interpose any objection on the issuance of a new franchise to ABS-CBN. That is pro forma. We ask that to all regulators of all agencies, whether it is the DOE for new applications of, uh, or the ERC for new applicants on the power industry or which that we're tackling at that particular point in time where a regulator of that particular um, 
uh, industry is involved. So, um, Mr. Chair, it would be very good to remind them that in the next hearing that they should attend because we want to ask them, do they interpose any objection on the issuance of a new franchise or a uh, um, reissuance of the franchise to ABS-CBN? Uh, that is an important uh, matter that we have to ask them or an important point rather that we have, we have to ask them. If they uh, do not attend in the next hearing, uh, then they primarily waive their right to make any comment of this particular issue uh, because they must comment whether they interpose objections or not, uh, Mr. Chairman. Just for the record, but we must reiterate to, to them that they must appear in the next hearing. And we do not discuss issues that would be uh, subjudice, subjudice per se on, on the cases filed, but we need to ask them if they interpose any objection uh, at all on the issuance of a new franchise. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Senator, thank you, Senator Zubiri. I do agree that there are uh, administrative matters, uh, procedural matters that can be answered and should be answered by the NTC. However, they can always invoke uh, the subjudice rule if uh, the uh, matters pertaining to the case itself will be discussed. And uh, we will uh, make sure that uh, in the next hearing, uh, they will be uh, attending to answer administrative and uh, procedural issues, uh, Senator Zabiri. And um, we also recognize... Yes, Senator Zabiri. It's not, it's not me, sir. It's not me, Mr. Chairman. I'm, thank you. Mr. Chairman, this is Senator Rebilia. Yes, uh, we recognize the presence of Senator Rebilia. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, um, thank you for including in the agenda uh, for today the two bills I, I filed on uh, ABS-CBN franchise. Uh, in my uh, proposed measure, Mr. Press, uh, Mr. Chairman, Senate Bill number 1403, I included in the authority to be given to NTC the following. In case of violations of uh, any of the provisions of this franchise, the NTC shall have the authority to revoke or suspend after due process the permits or licenses issued by NTC pursuant to the franchise. May I get your comment on this? Uh, maybe from DOJ or any legal luminaries that we have here present? Mr. Chair? Yes, any, uh, anyone who uh, cares to uh, shed light on the uh, query of Senator Revilla? Senator Billy might want to uh, direct it to a specific resource person. Okay, Mr. Chair. Who do you want it to, uh, who do, do you direct it to? Maybe, uh, Kusino po yung po pwede, uh, anybody, uh, yung sa ating po mga resource persons ngayon, uh, mga legal luminaries po natin. Senator Andre around uh, our, our former Senate President. CJ Puno. Uh, or uh, former Chief Justice Puno can answer. CJ Puno, are you still there? Or uh, former Senator Andre are you still there? So maybe we can discuss this in uh, in our next uh, yeah. hearing. Yeah, we will make sure that we okay. take up your query during the next uh, hearing, uh, and we'll take right. you will take note of that. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, Senator. Uh, Senator, but is Senator Bato still there? Na wala po kumakain na raw. Senator Risa. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just a quick comment po dun sa comment din ni Senate President kanina sa mga tanong po. Indeed, kung mag po tayo sa Senate na aprubahan ang 
renewal ng franchise ng ABS-CBN bilang isang pro-worker franchise, then certainly, no, looking at it from another uh, way, I would look forward na subukan din natin going pro-worker <coughs> ang franchise ng lahat ng mga uh, networks uh, moving forward, Mr. Chairman. So, uh, a pro-worker ABS-CBN franchise would be a good precedent for network franchises moving forward to also be uh, even more pro-worker. Salamat, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Risa. We'll take note of your comments. And uh, uh, during the uh, time that we will be deliberating on the uh, uh, Senate, uh, the House version, we will uh, uh, take note of that. Uh, Senator Lulon? Yes. Uh, you have the last... Uh, Comment. Yes, I was going to say, Mr. President, that has session at 1.30 uh, on the, uh, uh, this afternoon. It's just one hour away. Uh, I would suggest that the other questions that our colleagues may have in mind be reset to the next hearing, which will be called anyway, uh, in order to allow us a little time to prepare for the 1.30 Committee of the whole hearing. So, um, Mr. President, uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to suspend the hearing this afternoon. Thank you very Thank much. You. Sir. Thank you, Senator Frank. And with that uh, motion, we uh, suspend the hearing of the uh, four measures that we have discussed uh, earlier. Thank you, uh, uh, gentlemen, for uh, participating. Meeting is suspended. Hearing is suspended. Okay. 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 Okay.